hello, hello, hello. What's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, no. Hey, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Fine Thursday. I forgot to turn the volume down. I must have been watching a stream. Fine Thursday to you all. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. What is up? Lucid Great Destroyer Alano Verdi Black. Congrats on ranking up with Tours Monument. Daniel from Brazil. How are you doing today? Welcome, everyone. Hey, what's up, Cold Spy? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Oh my goodness, I'm hyped about this deck. So today, we did Commander Clash, and then I was like, okay, what are we going to play for this stream tonight? And I got a bunch of Pioneer decks that I still want to get to. And then I was looking through the newest deck lists that were published from Magic Online. The very top deck, the very first one, I saw Siege Rhino, and I was like, oh, all right, we got it. We figured it out. And this deck... This deck, okay, when I saw this deck, the first thing I thought of is there was some FNM player in like 2017, was walking home from FNM, somehow tripped and like hit their head, went into a coma for the last five years, woke up and was like, oh, Pioneer, what's this Pioneer format? I bet my Siege Rhinos are good there. I bet my Quirion Dryads are good there. Obnixilis, that Planeswalker's really good. I could bet I could play some Obnixiluses in that deck. It's so like... <laughs> It's so 2017, Abzan Charms, Abrupt Decays. It's such a like old school looking deck. And I'm super, I'm super excited to try it. I love Siege Rhinos. I love just Kunros, Fine Finality, Omnixlet. These are all cards that I have not seen in like a million years. And maybe they're the secret sauce. Maybe, maybe this is the the way to play Abzan Midrange <laughs> in a in Pioneer. Yeah, Meeting the Five kind of worked. It was better than I gave it credit for. Uh, speaking of Meeting the Five, we played it yesterday on the YouTube channel. Uh, reminder number one, you check it out on the YouTube. If you play Widespread Thievery and then Meeting and then meeting the five is actually like pretty excellent. I was like kind of surprised how easy it was to combo off. We also had some like, that's a query and dryad. We're playing 2017 magic here. <laughs> I guess query and dryads like, I don't even know, 1998 magic or something. That's old school, old school magic. Uh, yeah, it actually, it worked. It worked surprisingly well. It was like actually good. So I guess I have to take it back. I said it was the worst rare mythic from the set and it actually was like pretty oddly decent. Uh, I don't think it's busted or anything, but if you put in the work and you build around it, we had a lot of opponents just scoop to meeting the five. Like you cast it and cast a whole bunch of cards and just like win the game, even against top tier, uh, top tier decks. So other reminders since we're doing it. Replay YouTube, that's where you find the old streams, normal YouTube. Check out the meeting of the five spoiler videos, all that stuff. We also had another uh, smarter scummy short go up today. So give your vote on that. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. And if you need some magical cards, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish, even get a free Goldfish sticker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. Otherwise, do we have an answer to Lotus Field Combo? No, we're playing a, we're playing 1990s, or nine, not 1997, two, uh, 2017 Magic. The Lotus Field was not even a thing yet. Lotus Field, what's that? <laughs> Did not exist. Did not exist. Actually, I guess Go Blank is like kind of an answer, but I, I think we're mostly mostly just hoping to dodge it, I think, is probably our main plan. Uh, otherwise, Discord, new and improved, merch page, token t-shirts, play mats, good way to support the stream and the channel, the site, note agents, always appreciated, never required. Two dollars more, get your message read on stream. And uh, we're gonna do some Rhino -like. We're gonna start with Rhinos, and we got some backup decks if we get to it. We also have, I mean, Double Masters, the set looks insane, I gotta say. Like, it's hard It's hard to complain about anything except for availability. Like, yes, it could've used more modern reprints, but if you look at the value, like, they added Warrior's Oath, another $500 card. The average value is really high. There's a bunch of good rares. Like, this set's absurd. They threw in some modern stuff too, so they did add at least some things for modern. This set's just like, over the top really really good the problem we have with the set now is it's so good or so short supply i should say maybe partly because it's so good it's just getting like impossible to find the cards at a reasonable price i was thinking okay I'll pick up, maybe i'll pick up a box like the set looks good i'll pick up a box i was gonna go and just snag one i thought they were like 250 bucks and then this morning when i looked they were like 350 400 so it is getting really hard to actually get the to actually get the boxes at a, a decent price of course getting singles is usually the smartest thing to do i just ugh, i love opening packs so it's uh, i kind of want to gamble on a box just for fun plus the value is good but at 350 or 400, a lot less exciting, uh, I would say. The other news that I got to ask you all about is, 
we started spoiler season number two. We're still doing Double Master spoiler season, but Wizards jumped us right into Alchemy Horizons Baldur Gate spoilers. Ah, uh, these cards are are something. Uh, there, th these are like. <laughs> These are like memes, like custom cards. If you ever went to the custom card Reddit, combined with just like snarky jokes that people throw at wizards about <laughs> about their design, it's like they just embrace them all, put them together. We literally are getting six sided cards, six sided cards, like this uh, Leukemia card. It's it's actually six sided. Uh, you start with this side, then you can specialize it by discarding a card, and then it's gonna flip into what. Uh, Five different cards, depending on the color of the card that you discarded, all they having different abilities. We couldn't even read all the text on these cards. It would take the entire stream just to read the text on these cards. It's alchemy doesn't exist might be the best way to the best way to handle it. The only other question I wanted to ask you though, so I know alchemy, it doesn't, it doesn't actually really exist for most players. The thing that was weird to me though is six-sided cards would probably be sweet for QB, right? Some of these cards seem pretty normal though. Like John. Iron Kiss the Exiled, uh, a new version of John, or this Tasha, I was, when I read them, I was like, wait, couldn't this just be a paper card? Like, four mana, three, five. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card if your library has more cards than target opponent's library. Otherwise, each opponent mills five cards. Isn't that, I mean, I guess you'd have to do some counting, which is kind of a hassle, but I don't see any way, reason you couldn't play this card in Paper Magic. Like, couldn't you just play John in, in Paper Magic? Boom Gravy, any other gifts up to Dolph Grimm? Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Or Tasha, this new Tasha, I kind of wish they just printed it in a real set in paper. Okay, so I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Who wants to count a library every turn? Although I think you'll probably eyeball it and like speed it up a little bit. We got a new donation from McIntyre. Hey Seth, maybe this will make more of a video idea, but after seeing Ledger Shredder who's 47 cents of the release of SNC got me thinking, what's the biggest price swings up or down you remember for cards within in a few weeks of set release? Oh, so, <laughs> I definitely remember some downs. Uh, um, two that stand out were Narset. Oh my God, Narset. Narset was like ridiculously, ridiculously expensive. It was the most expensive card in its set. It was like, people were saying it was going to be the new Jace. It was going to break everything. It was going to be so good. And Narset just oh, it plunged from like $60 down to bulk mythic level. Um, that was one of them. Aurelia's, Aurelia's Fury, the X spell. That was a card that was super hyped and like $40 and went to nothing. And then the other one is uh time mm. it's a blue corset mythic there's like a time twister but it's five mana uh time something it's been reprinted in multiple corsets that was like forty dollars and then that ended up being literally the cheapest mythic of all time like i'm pretty sure that was back when i used to buy list cards a lot i'm pretty sure that they had like exceptions you used to be able to sell bulk mythics like 25 cents for any mythic but i think there was like asterisk except time reversal uh we will not accept time reversal <laughs> for 25 cents it was like literally the cheapest card <laughs> of the mythic rarity of all time hey what's up Richello? how are you good to see you good to see ya so i have to think about the other side i remember a lot of the price drops and cards that were overrated i i know there's a bunch more there's got to be a ton that like were cheap and got really expensive maybe like oko arc light phoenix uh those are recent ish ones there's got to be some good examples of cards going the other way though the other card of this tasha like okay this tasha so let's say john no one wants to count their life what about this Tasha? Four mana, four loyalty, plus one until your next turn, whenever a creature attacks you or Tasha, put a negative one, negative one counter on it. Okay, that's easy. Negative two, target opponent puts a creature card of their choice from their graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature gains War two. Okay, that we've seen that before. Negative six, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library. Until they reveal three creature cards, put those creatures on the battlefield under your control. The player puts the rest in their graveyard. Is there anything that's digital only about that? The only thing I could think that is even like slightly digital only is the creature gaining ward two. Maybe there's some weirdness about giving, stealing a creature and giving it ward two. But really, that, that seems like a normal card. Like if you stuck that in Commander Legends, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. Like that seems that seems like an actual real card that could show up in any set. So I don't know. Weird, 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 weird stuffs with alchemy. But anyway, I mean, we're gonna play some siege rhinos. That's our main plan for today. Can we make Kawiza Augur of Agony's budget standard brawl? Ooh, should we do more brawl? Should we do more brawl content? We've done like I've done one brawl video like years ago, I think. 
Uh, and it wasn't super popular, but Brawl, I think, is more popular now. We got another new donation. Dog Day and Wildfire $5 donation. My wife got me to play her new Miram deck last night or LGS. With Mira on board, she cast Astral Dragon Targeting Doubling Season. Wait, Astral Dragon Targeting Doubling Season. I don't even know what happens there. That's a lot of... That's a lot of doublings. <laughs> that's a lot of doublings. That is that go infinite? Dragons, doubling season. It's either a lot of doubling seasons or infinite. That sounds absurd. That sounds so good. Hey, see, Rhino, it is a good night for uh, for you to be here. Isn't Tasha a rebalance card? So is Tasha, hang on. We don't have a spoiler page up for these yet. So I was looking at MTG previews. Is it? What is... Tasha Unholy Archmage. I don't think so. What is the name of the real Tasha? I assume if it was Tasha Wish, uh, Witch Queen. So is it rebalanced? It has a new name. <laughs> uh, maybe reimagined. I don't even. I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. Is it a rebalanced version of Tasha? Is it a new Tasha? It's got a different name. Traditionally, with rebalance cards, they've had the same name. Who knows? I don't, I don't know what's going on in alchemy. I really, honestly, truly do not know what's going on in alchemy these days. There is Prosper, though. I mean, I will say the one thing that the set is going to do well is support Brawl on Arita. Like, adding Prosper, adding these cards, it is going to make Brawl interesting, I think. What do you think? Okay, let's talk about this deck and start playing Magic, and then we can... Oh, don't get me started about Gates. Okay, Little Mini Rat, Little Mini Rat. Gates were one of the part of Commander Legends Baldur Gate I was most excited for. Like, getting more gate support's really sweet. I was actually going to play Historic for the first time in a while just to play Mazes and Gates in Historic with the new gates because that was the only place I could play them. And then they, like, changed the gates. And I don't even, like, the gates are probably better. Now the black gate is a gate swamp and it comes into play tapped and you can seek a non-land card once and it adds black mana rather than being a dual land. But they they changed them. It's, ugh, I don't even know. I can understand being like, okay, we can't do these background planeswalkers. That mechanic's not going to work on Arena, so we're going to go a different direction. It's weird, but I get it. But why the gates? Why do you got to change the common dual lands into some monstrosity? So, I don't even know. I don't even know. Anyway, we can, we can talk about that as we go along. But, uh, let's talk about this deck really quick. So, we can start playing some magic, start doing some siege rhinoing, and then we can talk whatever y'all want to talk about. We can talk... Uh, double masters we can talk alchemy horizons and everything else so uh gate of black dragon versus black dragon really is that <laughs> did they just invert the words is that really what they did miram's really cool miram is super cool anyway okay so this deck i mentioned it before this is <laughs> i hit my head and have been in a coma for the last five years abzan for pioneer we got siege rhino so that's the reason we're playing the deck but the deck is just oh, it's got so many old cards our creature base siege rhino in the top end kuna rose graveyard hate vigilance menace lifelink a card that was kind of hype when it was spoiled and it's got a graph diggers cage almost built onto it but no one really plays it so that's a weird one and then query and dryad the original girl creatures we cast spells that are not green it turns into a bigger threat so we can play this and then thought sees or whatever and get counters on it make it into a big threat but it gets even weirder this is this is a deck that 5 would yeah that's a weird uh that is where i found it it's got omnixless reignited <laughs> The original Obnix list, which I haven't seen since it was in standard, but a good top end planeswalker. The most generic planeswalker probably ever printed. Plus one draw a card, negative three, kill something, negative eight, emblem that wins the game slowly. This was like the cookie cutter planeswalker of its day. Like so many planeswalkers had that same setup, plus card advantage, negative, destroy something, ultimate, win the game, but it takes a little while to get it done. Obnix list was like the prime example of that. We got abs and charps, removal that can also draw us cards or maybe pump our siege rhino, abrupt decays a full place at fatal pushes thoughts uses blood chiefs there's pretty reasonable mana base in the sideboard go blanks for control and combo kalidas to deal with creature decks more obnixilises for control wait Obnixilis. Okay, that's a different version of the same Obnixilis. It's a Planeswalker deck one. Gideon's scavenging use for graveyards. Voice of Resurgence to play control. And that's the deck. We're casting Siege Rhinos. We're casting Obnixiluses. The old school Obnixiluses. Uh, did Richard... It does look like a Richard deck, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. <laughs> Alias Babylon. First two-sided cards. Then... <laughs> Now, six-sided cards. Can't wait for 20-sided cards. What do you think of the mechanics of those cards? Like, I kind of... <sighs> 
I, I think people are memeing on it a little bit. Obviously, alchemy is weird, and there are a lot of things that are weird about alchemy. But really, and I don't want to spend the time to read all those cards, but from the little bit that I did read, it does kind of seem like the mechanic on the cards are similar. What it, what it seems like they're trying to do is you have this creature, and then when you, whatever, transform it into the new creature based on whatever color you discard, you get, like, a base ability that's slightly twisted based on the color that you're turning into. That's what it seems like they're trying to do, which is kind of a neat idea. Maybe it'll play cleaner. It's definitely, like, so much to read. Like, who, who wants to read six cards for one card? Like, I had a hard time reading the D from Strixhaven. That's two cards with a lot of text on them. Do you really... At what point does the cognitive load become too much? At what point do you just check out? And you're like, I, I don't care. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't care. There's no way I want to take and know what... Not only what this card does, but what five different versions of the card on the back size does. Times that by 28 cards in the set or whatever. Times that by all these other cards. At some point, it might just be too much. It's not even complexity. I think Magic players can deal with a lot of complexity. Magic is a very complicated game. So I don't think it's that. I think it's more like... I don't even know. Like, I just don't want to deal with it. Maybe I'm too, maybe I'm just too lazy. I like my cards to be one card and I, my small brain can actually handle that. But once my card is six cards, I just, who's got the time? Who's got the time to read that? Um, what? I was actually just wondering that. I assume that arena crashes, but other than arena crashing, what happens when you discard a multicolor card? I actually, I actually don't know. <laughs> I'm losing interest in Mazic due to the high value of spoilers, so adding six versions of the same card is not something I'm interested in. The good news is, the good news is, it is digital only. So this is something you can just choose to ignore. I mean, it's not even affecting standard on Arena. This is just for alchemy. And I know a lot of people just don't engage with alchemy. So that's an easy way to, to deal with it if you so choose. Which is honestly, like, kind of how I deal with it. I've read the cards a little bit, but... Last alchemy release, I didn't even, I didn't even actually bother to, to read most of them. I still know what we're going to do for early access, though. I still got to, it's really up to all of you. Early access for the alchemy sets in like two weeks. And I don't know. Oh, boy, that's a lot of siege rhinos. We're going to need the mana, but turn one thought sees. You know what? We're going we're gonna to keep this. We're going to keep this. I also appreciate that there's no uh, companion in this deck. It is in historic as well. How do I sell my four-year badge? It's about five and five. Ooh, hmm. I'll have to look into that. I, I wonder if, I think what happened, and I'll have to confirm this. I think that at four years, that's as far as we went with the loyalty badges when we started it. I guess we didn't we didn't expect we'd be going this long. <laughs> Who knows? But we didn't plan past uh, past the four years, so I guess we got to get some new loyalty badges. Cause some people are up to sixty nine months now. So will there be competitive alchemy? There will. Uh, there will. There will. They've already done alchemy events, not many of them, but it is part of Arena's organized play system. And it also is like. <sighs> It's also something that, you know, maybe we just play the tap land. Yeah, it's fine. Queen thought he's on two. Shambling might go. Um, it's also something where... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know what the worst matchup for Siege Rhinos is? It's a... Uh, it's probably Lotus Field. <laughs> We got Thought Seizes, but you can't Thought Seize a Lotus Field. Uh, thought Seize you, though? Yeah, I don't know how we beat Lotus Field, honestly. That feels like our worst our worst matchup. All right, what do you got? Wish, Beseju, Mana Confluence. Well, if our opponent just does nothing forever, we might be good. We need green mana. Green mana. Uh, if the alchemy rares were uncommons and mythics or rares, I might play the format. Can't afford standard explore and alchemy. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the biggest issue that I have as well. Just so expensive. How do you feel about homebrews in... Oh, that's not green mana. Okay. Well, we're doing a good job of drawing black mana. I actually think we just kill this. Our opponent's not going to have creatures to kill, so we might as well. All right. Green mana. Let's draw a forest. <laughs> um, how do you feel about homebrews in modern? Are established decks just so good that homebrews... Are the established decks just too good for homebrews to shine in multiple matchups? Ah, uh, no. I don't think that's true. I mean, okay, so, green, okay. 
No, no, no. Oh, we can attack with the shambling. All right, never mind. Um, yeah, the meeting of the fives actually worked. It worked way better than I would have guessed, for sure. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, ah, death is coming. Death is coming. I don't think that it's true that homebrews can't compete in modern. I will say... Modern is a very strong format right now. Thanks to Modern Horizons 2 and Modern Horizons 1 and Power Creep in general, it is really strong. There's a lot of powerful decks. And if you show up to a modern tournament with with a like kitchen tables. Oh, wait. Is there no green mana in this deck? That would be a problem. Uh huh. We do two siege rhino in zero green sources. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, well, take two. I, uh, we are probably... Ha-ha. Ha-ha. That's one way to get green mana. All right. Going to be too slow, I think, but boom. Try them. Go. Uh, your homebrews are going to have to be powerful. That's what I was trying to, trying to get to. If you show up with a deck that you've been playing casually on your kitchen table to a modern tournament, you're probably going to get crushed. But you can definitely build strong homebrews that are different than what anyone else is doing and be able to have success with them. I do fully believe that. Uh, they might involve Modern Horizons 2 cards, but... <laughs> So it really just depends on the deck. But I don't think it's true that you can't brew in Modern or build your own deck in Modern. I think Modern actually is still a very good format for that, along with Pioneer. Purple Saurus Rex, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I tried to make Meaning of the Five work, but folks kept blowing up my Hideaway enchantments with an... Oh, more card draw. With Invoke Despair. What, a, what is your homebrew? Do you have a homebrew in mind? I tried to make Meaning of the Five work. Yeah, the the Red Hideaway enchantment. Okay, so here comes our death. Yeah, this is just going to be a bit slow. So opponent gets a Lotus Field, which means they're ready to win in one to two turns. Hmm. Yeah, this is not the matchup we wanted to see. No, no, no. Uh, Krim is my older brother. Yeah. Yeah, brother, brother Krim. <laughs> Uh, actually, sometimes Krim feels like my my little brother. <laughs> Krim and Tomer both. I have a bunch of actual like little brothers, and sometimes Krim and Tomer just remind me of uh <laughs> of my little brothers. We well, draft the new set on Arena. Right now, that is in the lead for what we're gonna do for early access day. Uh, you gonna watch the weekly MTG stream? Probably not. Uh, I don't think, I mean, I guess it's up to y'all. If you really want to watch it, we can. I think we can check in on the spoilers as they go up. Um, but, but, I don't know. Is it, is it worth it? If it was not a reprint set, yes, uh, we definitely watch it. But for a reprint set, is it worth it? Is my little brother in the NBA yet? Not yet. He's actually in the process of transferring. Trying to figure out where he's gonna where he's gonna go next. Oh, but that can't kill those. Well, hit you with a rhino. Actually, hilariously, if we had hit our rhinos a little bit earlier, this might have this might have been enough. Because if one goes to yeah, if we had got our rhino our green mana one turn earlier, we might have just been able to rhino race. Because our opponent's going to eight. That's rhino attacks lethal. But now our opponent's untapping with two lotus fields and. And there's just not a whole lot we can do about that. I mean, two rhinos isn't bad. It's not bad. But our opponent has two lotus fields, which is better. <laughs> uh, opponent wins the game eventually. Uh, well, this will give us time to talk. What should we talk about as our opponent combos off for 45 minutes? <laughs> Might be able to vanishing versus omniscience. Peer into the abyss, draws half the deck, down to four. They can still whiff. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they drew the half of their deck that was all lands. <laughs> GP Vegas is like Dover, likely. Still not 100%, but likely that I will be in Vegas. Hidden stirrings. 
No, nah, my little brother's not in the NBA yet. He's he's playing he's playing college right now. He's playing D1 college. Uh but he would like to be in the NBA once he's done doing that. We'll see. We will see. He is like seven foot, which does work to your advantage. Your odds of making it to the NBA if you're seven foot is I, I don't know if this is true anymore. I saw this research a few years ago that if you're seven foot, your odds are one in four of making it to the NBA. Compared to being like six foot five or something, it's like one in a million or whatever. <laughs> so your odds do increase a ridiculously huge amount if you're that tall. Uh, I'm like six three, six four, six three and a half, somewhere around there. About it. Will you support little brother if he plays for rival team? I don't really have like a hugely, hugely favorite NBA team. I guess I kind of like the Sixers just because. Uh, I like the Sixers because I found the process in the analytics part of it interesting. <laughs> that got me to be a Sixers fan. Them losing all the time. Um, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't actually care where he ended up. How is a Clash crew in order of fight? Everyone else is tiny. <laughs> Seriously, I, like, I'm, I'm like 6'3 or 6'4. Tomer might be the next tallest. But he's not like, I think Tomer's probably the next tallest. And then Richard and Krim. I think Krim's the smallest. Krim, <laughs> Krim and I is, next to each other is pretty funny. Like, I'm just big. I'm like tall and big. And Krim is so, he's just short and little. We're on the exact opposite ends of the, the spectrum as far as size. So it, I'm sure we look hilarious. Plus, I mean, Krim, you never know what he's going to show up in like a dinosaur outfit or something. You never know what Krim will wear. <laughs> It might be that, too. I, I do know a lot about losing <laughs> as a Bills fan. About it still going off. <laughs> but things are looking up. Things are looking up for the Bills and the Sixers. Yeah, basically like Penn, basically like Penn and Teller. <laughs> uh, five foot six. How tall? Who's the tallest person in chat right now? Does anyone have me beat? Someone's got to have me beat. So I'm like six three... Six three and a half, six four. If you want to round up, any anyone over that? Yeah, my family's actually all super tall. Six three. Okay, okay. See, we got we got a pretty tall chat. We got a, ooh six four. All right, postman in the lead. Uh, I'm a Sixers fan. Yeah, I, as far as NBA team, Sixers are probably my favorite actually. Wow, this is six nine. Purple Source Rex. Coming in at 6'5". Wow, we are, we might be the tallest chat on Twitch. I'm impressed, Fishball. What did our opponent just do to us? I don't even know what the... Oh, I see. Valakid Awakening. All right. Well, our Vanishing Verse wouldn't have mattered anyway. The Mythos of Nethroy maybe a little bit. Oh, Lotus Fields. Lotus Fields. Well, Go Blank's coming in. And I guess... Well, that's about it. Fatal Push does nothing. How do we... Is there a way we can beat this deck? Is there any is there any reasonable way to us winning this game? Maybe we bring in ah, boy. This is this is tough. Tough, tough, tough on basically every level. Ooh, Siege Rhinos is at its best playing uh playing, I think, creature decks. I think that's where wow, we have so many dead cards. We can't even bring out all the, the cards that are just dead. <laughs> We're going to have to keep some of them. Maybe Voice Resurgence is fine. Voice Resurgence. Maybe a Skews. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, we're just... We're going to play Thought Seizes. Actually, even these Blood Chiefs are probably not very good. The Oozes don't seem that good either. The only removal that seems like it might matter is Instant Speed removal. Because we could get, like, the, the Niv or something if we get lucky. Yeah, I don't feel like this deck came planning for <laughs> planning for Lotus Field. But they 5 0'd, so I guess maybe they just dodged. Is there any card you wish was in Double Masters? Oh. Um Honestly, and this isn't a reasonable wish. Damping Sphere could be a good a good option. Uh or Deafening Silence could also be good. Uh, yeah, so there's, there is things that we can do. We'll see. I mean, if we just play against Zambing Sphere, or if we just play against Lotus Field a bunch, then something will have to be done. Uh, is there anything that I wish was in this set? So, probably not in a reasonable thing to wish for, 
But the, one of the biggest issues with modern is really the Modern Horizons 2 stuff. I know it's only a year old, but like Ragavans, Evoke Elementals, Urza Sagas, those would be nice. <sighs> Liliana the Veil over Liliana the Last Hope. More modern stuff overall. The other thing, I mean, reserve list cards, of course, but that's not going to happen. The other thing I kind of wish for, and <sighs> this is against my better judgment, but maybe the maybe the free if you have your commanders oh no maybe the free if you have your commander cycle the free if you have your commander cycle i feel like is really expensive gonna be hard to reprint outside of commander products unlikely to show up in commander precons because it's so expensive so where where do you reprint where do you reprint a card like that like that's <laughs> Hi! All right, dead, dead, <laughs> dead. <laughs> oh, dirty! And they had to have it in their opening. Oh my god! All right. Well, uh, yeah. I don't even think we have a way to kill this. <laughs> so. Wizards doesn't acknowledge, there's, there's a misconception about that. Wizards does not publicly acknowledge the secondary market, but they have economists on staff. They a million percent base their business decisions on the secondary market. There's not even, that's not even up for debate. Like that's just, that is just the straight up truth. So there is a, a bit of a misconception there. So Wizards, they just don't talk about it when it comes down to it. That's the, that is the, the truth of the matter. Hmm. Well, okay. Yeah, get in there. One, one. <laughs> Got him. Yeah, maybe leaving in Vanishing Verse would have been worth it. There's just no way to skews beat past. Uh, this hand would have been good if it wasn't for the lane line. There's just no way to race <laughs> the Lotus Field combo with this setup. There's just none. Not possible. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with Lotus Field coming to Arena? I feel like it's going to get... Ah, either they split the ban list or it's going to get banned. We don't have a single Besaju. That is true. I guess we should have... Well, we definitely should have cracked that. So what we get for f 6 ing I feel like nothing we do actually is really going to matter. We'll see. If we get punished by not playing that voice. That was a punt. We just, I just f 6 expecting uh, our opponent to take forever. Well, Lotus Field is on Arena, but the combo pieces are not on Arena. So right now, Lotus Field is played like a like a weird ramp spell, essentially. But you don't have the ability to, to combo with it. There's no Thespian Stage. There's no Untappers. So it's just played... So it's just played... Uh, oh, there's no Forest in the deck? That's awkward. So it's just played fairly for the most part. Well, boom, boom. Voice of Resurgence, trigger that. <laughs> Grow the dork. Thought sees ourselves. Grow the dryad. Take the go blank. Ah, oh, this hand would have got him too. The thought seasons and go blanks would have been so good. Well, hit him. So we need many turns. The dryad's growing. It is growing. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do about it. I don't think there's any way it can exist in best of one. I don't, th I, I don't think, I think it'll just dominate the format. Like, I think it will, I think it just will break the format in best of one. Ooh, Popper. Popper is an interesting format. I've liked Popper at various times. Popper is weird. It goes through good and bad times in my experience. <laughs> we actually, well, we'll probably put the ooze next turn, but... We will go blank ourselves at some point. <laughs> go blank yourself. <laughs> I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start saying that to people. Go blank your. Go blank yourself. <laughs> Can you a Planeswalker Tribal on stream today in Pioneer? Uh, so Planeswalker Tribal is coming up for against the odds next week, but I don't think. Uh, uh, we probably will not play Planeswalker Tribal tonight. I don't actually have a pauper Planeswalker Tribal deck built at the moment. What Planeswalker? Let's say you could pick any Planeswalker to have a Planeswalker Tribal deck in Pioneer. Which one would you go with? Abodent. Botanical Sanctum. 
explode some mana. Oh, I hate playing. I really hate playing against this deck. Opponent. Definitely getting the most use out of this game. We have played for a whopping three and a half minutes almost. Opponent going on eh, 12. Oh, deck isn't even legal in Pioneer though. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's how I gotta talk on Vince's stream when my mom might tune in. <laughs> uh, have you thought about doing some budget magic videos for Explore? Although I guess Pioneer are pretty close and can probably be transferred to some degree. <sighs> the yes, so I think there will be. There's definitely several, at least two Pioneer budget magics coming up. The challenge is with Arena is budget is just. Uh, it's uh, almost not a thing. The problem with Arena is the way the economy is set up. Budget is not playing rares and mythics. And it's really, really tough to build decks that are actually good enough to like win sometimes and are not just mono colored decks like Burn or Mono Red Burn or Mono Red Aggro or Mono Blue Tempo with, uh, without, uh, without having access to some number of rares and mythics. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the problem. Did your mom really watch Vince's? <laughs> I did a I did a commander game with Vince a while ago. This is a true story. So Vince <laughs> Vince, oh my god, it's so funny. So I did the commander game with Vince, and you know Vince. Vince Vince uh he can be a little bit dirty with his talking. So I do the commander game with Vince, and it's, it's a blast. I always love playing with Vince. Next morning I get a phone call like seven in the morning. <laughs> And it's my mother. My mother wakes me up at like seven in the morning I, and says, I watched you. I watched you on this. I watched you on that this video. You, I must have tweeted about it. And my mother apparently like stalks my Twitter sometimes. Um, so I watch you in this video with this with this very foul mouth boy. And I'm, uh, I'm afraid he's going to be a bad influence on you. You're not going to start talking like that, are you? <laughs> I said no, it'll it'll be okay, mom. And then I was I was telling her that I was going to the Command Fest Richmond just like a couple weeks ago, and and she said, oh, uh, you know, are any of your are any of your friends gonna be there? And I said, yeah, I you know some people that I know from the internet. I'll get to hang out with. That'll be cool. And she said, is that is that foul mouth boy gonna be there? Apparently that's. <laughs> Apparently that's uh that's her name for vids. That that foul mouth boy. <laughs> oh. Does your mom just search you constantly? I I think so. I know every once in a while I I'll she'll call me and say something about something I tweeted. So she she doesn't follow me on Twitter. I didn't even know she had a Twitter, but she must she must like stalk my Twitter. <laughs> yeah, worried that Vince might be a bad influence. Yeah, I, oh yeah, I've told, I told Vince's story. <laughs> oh, kill me opponent for the love of God. Just kill us, kill us. Yes, she is opponent, Niv Mizaparoon. And <laughs> my mom cracks, my mom cracks me up. We've obviously, everyone knows we've had all, all these horrible, <laughs> horrible shootings we always i mean our oh, that stuff happens all the time my my mom speaking of my mom's stories my mom called me like a week ago and she was like all she was like all all uh all amped up and she said <laughs> she said did did you know that people are shooting schools with with like machine guns with like with like automatic guns i said yeah that's i mean that's like a big thing I, what do you think they were doing she said, well, i thought they were using farmer gu farmer guns I said no and I, no they're they're using they're using actual real guns she said why why are those legal why why do people even buy those i said yep you're telling me you're telling me mom like many many people have asked that same question <laughs> but farmer farmer guns farmer guns i i don't know i guess i i don't know i assume it's like a a shotgun they use to shoot like a woodchuck that's that's coming into your cattle or something i i'm not even sure <laughs> oh she is she is awesome and very wholesome i think she was picturing like I don't know. Well, she grew up in, we still live in a pretty rural area in upstate New York. So I'm assuming she's thinking of like, I don't know, her grandfather out on a farm, keeping the, I don't know, the, 
the wolves from getting the sheep or something like that with I don't even know what kind of gun they would have, but yeah, so, something like that. Oh, oh all right, cat of it. Well, Kunaros should be very, very good here. This hand actually is very well set up to deal with cat oven. Okay, so we gotta think about this. How do we how do we do this without killing ourselves to our shock lands? Turn one. I'd like to thought seize. Kunaros is gonna be great. The hound, the hound is gonna be so good here. And we have a backup in case there's removal. We do gotta be aware of Mayhem Devil. You know what? Let's just play the Triome. I'm worried about taking too much shock land damage. Shock thought sees turn one, and we're down to 16. And this deck does have some reach. So play it a little slower. Thought sees next turn. Abrupt decay, fatal push, Kuna Rose. This seems this seems decent. Ooh, I actually Oh, Barbie, Barbie's uh Barbie's sleeping. He's got Oh, he's got a new friend. It's so I had to take him to the vets on Monday, and he's He's up to 130 pounds. He's turning. Hmm. Well, take Mayhem Devil. Now we're going to shock our, we're just going to take them both. This is pretty good. Mayhem Devil. Thought Seize. Take the Croxa. Then we want to blow up the Witch's Oven and then play the Kunaros and we're like in business. Barry's up to 130 pounds. Yeah, he's... Most full-grown Rottweilers do not get to that size. And he's he's almost a year. He'll be a year in like two weeks. Uh, but he's got a new friend in the neighborhood. Moved in that has this little puppy. Uh, German, A little German Shepherd puppy. That is... Ugh, I don't know. Some number of months old. But it's very little. And Bear is just... He cracks me up. He's just like... Uh, 130 pounds, not, yeah, not, not English pounds, 130, uh, American weighted pounds. He's just so like big and friendly and lazy. And this little German shepherd puppy is like the highest energy. He's like the highest energy little puppy. And he just, he jumps on bear's face and like bites on his face and bites on his legs. He's just like yipping and jumping and just like the wildest little puppy and bear, <laughs> Bear just does not, he doesn't care. Like, he just, he puts up with anything. He's just so nice in situations like that. The puppy just, like, goes at him and goes at him. And Bear just, do-to-do, do-to-do. And if it, if it gets to be too much, he'll just, he'll take his one paw and just put it on the puppy's head and just kind of, like, push him off. Just kind of, like, swat him back to, to get him off of his face. But he's just, he does so good with stuff like that. It makes me want to get another puppy just because he does so well with it. Have you ever made a bear commander deck? No, but I want a bear emote. We're supposed to be getting in the near future. In the near future, a bear emote for the for the channel, which I'm excited about. About it. All right, so abrupt decay the witches of it. Step one. Get rid of that. We could use some rhinos. Rhinos would be good. Which is oven down. Oh, Kunaros is for days. <laughs> All right, Kunaros number one. Vigilance, menace, lifelink. Creatures in the graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from their graveyards. Play the land. Only downside is it is legendary. Had to kill the oven because I could steal it and sack it. Am I tweeting right now? Mm, no. <laughs> I never even have my Twitter open when I'm on stream. Am I? Is my account saying things? No, I'm I'm not tweeting anything. Uh, claim the firstborn, sure. Opponent. Oh, they have the village right, so they still get to sack it. Yeah, I guess there wasn't a way around this, but we do have infinite Kuna Roses. Claim the firstborn sack outlet. It's been a minute since I've seen that combo. Opponent draws some cards. Where's our, we need like some Abzan charms, some rhinos. Opponent draws another Croxa. Well, Kunaros. Oh, if they can kill this Kunaros, then we lose after all of this, which would be so disappointing. Like we, 
did everything we needed to do to be in this game, but our opponent is still is just like stealing our Kuna Roses. Abundant. Hey Zeth, have you ever had the chance to play a vintage cube graph yet? So absurd. Oh, I've played so many vintage cubes. I haven't played any this run. Um, but yes, I oh I love vintage cube. Vintage cube is one of the, my favorite ways to play Magic. All right, Cauldron Familiar, Unlucky Witness. Abundant passes. Ooh. <laughs> That's spicy. Um, uh, can we attack? How do we do this? All right, go to combat. Hit our opponent. I don't like them getting the unlucky witness cards, but get in with the hound. This doesn't work, right? It does not work. <laughs> <laughs> they thought Fatal Flitch was a little, a little better than, uh, than it is. <laughs> uh, about it. Blocks and blocks. Let's see what they find from the witness. Yeah, kill them both. We gain some life. Exiles. Deadly dispute. And, hmm, Okay. That's fine. They can't actually channel the channel and we'll play Obnix List. OG Obnix List. Draw a card. Fable Passage. Go. Opponent. Untaps. We might be good. Yeah, that was that was more of a nudge. <laughs> Claim the first. Wow, this feels so bad. But, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you keep drawing claim the firstborn and card draw, then. Oh, wow. Okay. Jeez. Jeez a Louise. Opponent is drawing the Sedia Stream of Action, that is for sure. Opponent passes. And now the Crocs has start coming back, which is super bad for us. Well, take up draw a card. Vanishing verse. Oh, that would be better if we could kill a How do we beat these Croxes though? Like is I think we're just gonna die still. We played three Kuderoses and it didn't matter. Our opponent just kept drawing claim the firstborn sack outlets. Again and again and again. Uh, could use an Abzan charm. That would be good. Karaxa for our opponent. We'll discard a vanishing verse. Opponent. Gets it for one. Uh, we we played three and they're all dead. <laughs> Fabled passage, not helpful. Draw a card. Well, play Query and Dryad. Blood Chief's Thirst. The Croxa. Fabled Passage go, but the Croxa just keeps coming. Omnixilus is sweet, but I don't know if it beats Karaxa here. Demonic Tutors! Thank you for the raid! Welcome, Raiders. We are, we're Siege Rhinoing and uh, Query, Query and Dry Ending in Pioneer today. So you're saying we should have, you think we should have taken Claim the Firstborn over, over Karaxa? <sighs> well, opponent gets in, hits us. Gets back Karaxa again. <sighs> Down to seven. Could use a could use a rhino. Could use a charm. Could use something. 
And another cauldron familiar. <laughs> then the deck. <sighs> yeah, but the doggos, we drew three of them. They're not actually that easy to stay out. Shambling vent. Well, I mean, I guess we have to kill the crocs. Uh, play the shambling vent. Pass the turn. <laughs> I'm not feeling very confident. I'm not feeling very confident with where we're at now. We're low on life. We've gotten Croxied a million times. Yeah, they, they'll find a way to get more cards in the graveyard or the raw witches oven and just cat loop us. We're trying. The Shambling Guest Life Gain could be relevant. Uh, opponent. I don't know what they did there. Something. Oh, Jingatha? All right, opponent draws Jingatha. Passes. Oh, even more lands, even more lands. Not good, not good. Take up Obnixilis, draw a card. All right, there's a Rhino. Rhino is actually a decent magic card. Finally, Rhino. Grow the Dryad. Gain a bit of life. Blooming Marsh. Pass the, uh, more of those. More rhinos, please. More rhinos, please. A voter that taps. Uh, our our dog is uh, is our grab digger's cage. Except it dies a lot. <laughs> About it. Gonna go to combat. Attacks. Uh, Attacks. Uh, hmm. Yeah, let's. I think we kill it. Yeah, let's kill it. Hopefully our opponent did not top deck another removal spell. All right, Jengatha down. We go to seven. Blood Crypt tapped. Godless Shrine. We really are drawing all the lands in the West. Oh, my God. Okay, Cycle, a Triome. Mean, at least that's a land that can be cycled. Abzan Charm. Hmm. Well, okay. Shambling vent. Hit ya. Gain some life. What a close game. This game's been super close. What does our opponent find? Epicure. A little bit of looting. So they're going to get this Croxa back shortly. Yeah. Discards land draws. What? Another cauldron familiar. Okay. Down to six. But we have to not kill anything or they get back to Croxa, which is awkward. <laughs> about it. I mean, 25 lands, I think, is about right. We've just drawn a lot of them this game. Okay, Dryad. Well, draw with Ob. Uh, huh. <laughs> Five is not a lot of life. Exile Croxa with Charm. Exile Creature Power 3 Greater. Draw two, lose two, distribute two counters among one or two target creatures. So we can't exile the graveyard with this. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, what do we do here? The problem is if oh, we don't want this witness to die. Yeah, I think we just got to stay on defense, play the tap land, pass the turn. We do got a lot of lands. We do got a lot of lands. Oh, what if our opponent finds witches oven though? Witches oven so deadly. Opponent untaps. Well, they're an epic here. Okay. That's going to get him the Croxa card next turn. <laughs> this game is so close. Uh, all right. We got tap it four. Another. Maybe there are too many lands. Draw a card. Okay. Rhino. That's a good one. 
Play Rhino. Go back up to six. Grow the Dryad. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Rhino! Exile Croxa with the trigger on the stack. We we very well might. Now play this on Petal Grove. Pass the turn. Opponent's got all 1-1s one -ones at the moment. These Rhinos are kind of keeping us alive-ish. About it. Adepts. Yeah, I mean, the, the stack deck is super grindy. Opponent discards a land, draws a card. Mostly worried about Witch's Oven. Yeah, I'm curious why our opponent's not more aggressive, too. It seems like their creature's dying is beneficial, because it... <laughs> Like, either they hit us for damage, or they fill a graveyard for Croxa, so unsure why they weren't doing that. Could some Blink be viable? Maybe. There's just not a ton of... Not a ton of good Blink in... In the format. There's no, like, Ephemerate or anything in this format. Oh, discard the Dryad. Bone against the Croxa. <laughs> And passes. Now we untap. Rhino. Rhino. That's a rhino. That's a rhino. That's a rhino. Okay. Okay. Things are looking up. We might be getting there. This might be rhino power. It took every hound, um, it, everything in our deck name, really. Rhino. Grow it. Drain you. And then I think Ob is going to tick down to get rid of the Croxa. Go to combat. Get in with a Rhino. And I guess also the Dryad. And that might be too much. Let's get in with the Rhino. Opponent blocks. What do they hit? <laughs> Unlucky Witness. Epicure Deadly Dispute. Okay, so card draw goes to 12. I don't know if we're going to win this or not, honestly. Wait, what are we getting What are we getting punted for? Can Exile Croxa with Charm? I feel like we can get more value, hopefully. Hopefully out of the Charm. Our opponent's pretty short on cards at the moment. Well, they're filling the graveyard pretty quick here. All right, opponent draws a bunch of cards. I feel like I feel like we can get more value out of the Abzan charm than than just throwing it at the Croxa. Oh boy, they got to be about out of these, right? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, opponent steals our career and dryad. And. Uh, these claims of firstborns have been so obnoxious. Opponent sacks it to an ob, which is pretty huge. Yeah, that's that's bad. That's bad news. Mm, feeling bad again. <laughs> Maybe we should use Charb to put counters on Vent to preserve our life. I'm hoping... I'm hoping that we'll be able to kill our opponent with a seizure I know, but... All right, down to seven. Double ob with a lot of loyalty. That was a really, really good turn for our opponent. These claim the firstborn and endless card draw effects have been very, very good for them. Opponent, down to the bugbear. One card again temporarily. All right, opponent passes. Good draw, please. Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, now what? Uh, we need a Seth-themed standard set. Can you build one 
with wizards maybe make a panharmonic on every rarity Ooh, i would i would like that who's got the better op that's a real question i don't know if i'd be good at <laughs> designing magic cards it would be interesting though well draw with ob down to six it's another land So Crocs is coming back. There's a Den of the Bugbear. Opponent's got a card in hand. They didn't play... Oh, they did play the Epicure? They didn't play the Epicure. I don't even know anymore. Are they going to put Ravages of War into X2? Earlier this morning, I saw that it was a possibility. Like, it hadn't been number crunched out. So maybe, um, I don't know what else is fighting for that slot. Oh, actually, well, it seems unlikely now because we have every mythic from the set. So actually, do we have the full set? We have like two rares left. We'll look at the spoilers in just a minute, but we, we basically, after this, after this match, we'll look at the spoilers, but no, I think Ravages is out now. Yeah, but we can't kill the obs, and if those obs keeps ticking up, it's so bad for us. I think we gotta fire up Shambling Vent and hope. Fire up Shambling Vent. Go to combat. Hmm. Ob. If we kill the obs, do we still just die? Hmm. So we can go up to 10 if our opponent doesn't have removal. We really need the obs though to go away. They're gonna be hard to fight through. Oh, and against the odds, that would be sweet. I would totally be I would totally be down with that. We need more we need more against the odds sets. Oh, this is such a tough spot. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, Pony is like super lethal. So attack an ob. Attack an ob. Get in at the ob. See how our opponent blocks. Yeah, we're probably going to have to thirst the big ob. What do we grow? Have you heard of Set Roulette? It was a thing Pascal Menard was running on Moto. Random sets a uh, pool of sets, building standard decks out of it. Ooh, that's interesting. When are we getting a bear cam? A bear cam would be sweet. He usually just he usually just moves around too much. The only problem with this is in the ob lives, but I think in the long run, actually, let's do it like this. This is the best of both worlds. Split the counters. So we kill the ob. And then we Blood Chief's Thirst kill the ob. All right. That's what we got. 
Um, yeah, play the land. Pass the turn, save us rhinos. A boner that taps. Yeah, we're gonna have to play faster, I think, because this is this is game one, right? <laughs> a Veer go GoPro would be sweet. Just follow him around all day. So we know Crocs is coming back. All right, opponent, deadly dispute. Get some treasures. Opponent's drawing a, a lot of cards. Outdrawing us for sure. Here comes Crocs. Uh, three cards in hand. Yeah, so we go to six. Crocs is super annoying. We even have those. Our dogs didn't hold up. Our dogs didn't hold up. Opponent. More cats down to five. Plays a land. And passes. We draw Mythos of Nethroi. Okay. Well, uh, kill Croxa. <laughs> Get rid of the Croxa. Fire up the shambling vent. Go to combat, attack you. Opponent blocks. We go up to eight, draw with ob. All right, fatal pushes something past the turn. What a ridiculous game. <laughs> Yeah, kind of a disappointing last mythic. Opponent, going to Croxa, I'm sure. We've basically played through both of our whole decks. Croxa comes back. Well, um... Yeah, I think we gotta let it go and discard the Fatal Push. If we kill this and then they kill the rhino, we die to Den of the Bugbear. So, yep. All right. Discard the Fatal Bush. Den of the Bugbear. Opponent. Passes. The Fable Passage, not great. Well, blow up the Croxa. Fire up the Shambling Vent. Oh, my goodness. Ha! Ah! Oh my goodness. Well, now the problem is we're going to time out, but that was, that was a pretty impressive Rhino game. Like we were, that was, oh, I love Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino is such a sweet card. We spent the entire game being almost dead, being almost dead, being almost dead. And the Siege Rhinos coming down really saved us. Like that was, that was huge. That was huge. That was huge. That was huge. Is playing Popper series dead? Ah, uh, dead-ish. <laughs> I mean, uh, we will have Popper every once in a while, but it's not a not a regular thing at this point. Would you like more Popper? Oh, we need Rhinos and Explorer for sure. All right, let's look at uh, let's look at the rest of these mythics. So we basically have the full set. Our last our last mythic. So we actually have all the mythics in Double Masters now. They filled it out with Ural sixteen bucks, Halkite Overlord three bucks, a meal twelve bucks, Monastery Mentor is the last one. So no Ravages or or whatever could have been in that slot. I think this was a slot that Ravages could have been in or Smothering Tithe. Monastery Mentor's fine. Uh, I don't know where he's playing a vintage. Legacy is probably its biggest home at this point. But that's, I guess, fine reprints. As far as rares, do we have them all? We're missing two. There's two missing rares. The ones that we got recently, Bloodforge Battle Axe, I guess is actually, I didn't know this was an $18 card, but apparently it is. Talran Bulk, Jeskai Ascendancy, Pioneer card, but also pretty bulky. Elsha, Popular Commander, Combo Commander, but bulk. Abbot of Carol Keep, I haven't seen that in a long time. Revel Arc, so a bunch of bulk rares. Uh, as far as the EV, it's, I mean, it's, it's still good. It's still good. But boxes are so much. It's good if you get a box for 250 bucks or even 300 bucks. But if you're paying 400 bucks 
and then you got the variants to deal with, but I don't know. So, so what do you think? Now that we've seen every, I guess we should sideboard real quick. I'm getting distracted by spoilers. Now that we've seen every mythic in the set, literally every single one, um, good, bad, happy, sad. Where, uh, where are you at? Where are you at with the set? So we're going to be in all the graveyard hate. We're going to go on these query on dryads, which are pretty painful to get stolen and sacked. Maybe the go blanks. If we can find room, hounds, charms, rhinos. Maybe you don't like a blood chief thirst. Hmm. Maybe something like that. Oozes, hounds, rhinos, Kalitas. Hopefully that's enough to win. So where are you at? What do you think about this at? Yeah, I mean, the general as a general rule, singles. Singles, singles, singles is the way to go. That is that is always the correct advice almost always unless you just want to gamble but but yeah singles is the way to go i'm hopeful this will get prices down we'll see unlucky witness for our opponent well try you we got two rhinos we got a thought seize we need a couple lands to get there but spoiler season has been a bit of a roller coaster first day was great second day was terrible Third day was amazing. Still pretty to box, though, because the set looks fun as hell. The draft. Yeah, I mean, the draft does look super fun. And Wizards has a pretty good track record with with uh, Master Sets drafts. Like, in general, they've been really good. Well, that was easy. Okay. Going to draw some cards first. Ob and Crocs of G's. Well, at least I can't sack anything to Ob. Huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, well. Jesus, hand. And our clock. How do we do this? Two deadly disputes. Roiling Vortex, don't care. Unlucky witness. I think we take Unlucky Witness. Yeah, take Unlucky Witness. So our opponent is incentivized to cast the cards from Exile if they can. And then maybe we can go blank away the problems. That's a that's a really strong hand. Very, very strong. Bunch of card draw. I mean, it gets worse without the creature. And they can't Croxa and Deadly Dispute this turn, which is good. Maybe we're all right. Opponent plays a land. Wow, just runs out the ob. All right, sure. And makes a devil. Well, I think actually, sadly, we have to kill the devil. <laughs> or else it turns on the deadly disputes. Yeah, get pinged. Oh, abrupt decay. We're going to run out of time. We're going to run out of time. Um, yeah, let's rub decay it. I think we get more value. We get more value out of the go blank next turn, I think. So our opponent probably goes land ob. All right, they just run out rolling vortex and land. Okay. We get pinged. Uh, Blooming Marsh. Well, one, two, three. Go blank you. Probably get rid of the deadly disputes. And then they can't stop the rhino life gain if they leave it up, but rhino's still a good body. Oh, they had to claim the first one. All right, so opponent's hand is deadly dispute ob. Opponent. Well, we know ob is a coming. Can the Rhino beat it? About it. One, two, three. Ob, devil. We get pinged. Oh, okay. Well, uh, go blank you. All right, that's what you got. That's what you got. That's what you got. 
Out of cards, no card draw. Can we beat the OBS? We got rid of it all. Pass the turn. This is Siege Rhino's time to hopefully save us. We'll see, opponent. See what they draw. Uh, we'll take the two, down to 12. Hit us, yeah, down to 11. Opponent, Epicure, down to 10. Down to nine. We are getting pinged into oblivion here. Oh. Oh, I think we just got a siege rhino though. Uh, rhino. So we're not gonna gain the life, but this does give us a blocker, which is relevant. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Opponent untaps down to 15, gets pinged down to 14. At some point we can kill the vortex and then start gaining life, maybe. Opponent discards a swamp. What do they draw? Oh, this is so close. We're gonna time out. Ob. Ooh, yep, down to seven. And just a den of the bugbear. Okay. Opponent passes. We go to six. Abs and charm. I'll go to combat. Kill the ob. Opponent lets it go. Siege Rido. Hit you to 13. Yeah, we don't get to gain life. This is ridiculously close. Opponent adapts. Gets picked out to 12. Cauldron Familiar hits us down to five. Goes to combat. No attacks. We drop to four. That is not much life. Fatal push. Okay. We're at four. This hits us to three. This hits us to two. Yeah, we're going to have to decay. Can we get in with a rhino? So if we attack with a rhino on our opponent's turn, they fire this up, we kill it. We block here, we go to one. Yeah, time is an issue. All right, get in with one rhino. <laughs> I mean, there's many things our opponent could draw that would be bad. But we're hoping they're like, oh, Den of the Bugbear, I win. And then we should be okay. Opponent goes to nine. Wow, this is ridiculously close. Fought it, ping to eight. So we should have lethal next turn. What do they draw? That's the question. Land, okay, okay, that's good. That's good, that's good. That's very good. Opponent. Thinking about it. I mean, if they don't go for it, they're going to lose anyway to our Abzad charm. Opponent goes to combat. No attacks. Okay, so one, two. Abrupt Decay, Roiling Vortex. <laughs> I can't believe we got there. I cannot believe we got there. Untap. Kalitas. I mean, this is just lethal, though, right? We go to combat. We swing with all the rhinos. And then Abzan Charm are sneaky. So opponent, Den of the Bugbear. We will Fatal Push it. I mean, our opponent can live if they block with everything. But are they really gonna play around Abzan Charm? Who plays around Abzan Charm in the league in 2022? No one, no one should. Why would anyone even consider it? All right, yeah, uh, green, white, and black. Abzan Charm, let's, uh, let's put a couple counters on things. <laughs> oh, yes, 
the ninth, the 2015 win, the 2015 win. <laughs> Siege Rhino and that charm, original Omnixilis. Wow, that was a ridiculous match. <laughs> Ooh, Rhino, Rhino time. My uh, list overlay hasn't loaded. Does the deck run Graveyard Trespasser? Oh, that's that's too modern for us. We got Kuneros. We got Kuneros in our three drop slot. <laughs> this deck's kind of sweet. That's kind of sweet. Oh, yeah, that is, this is old. Old school junk. <laughs> Literally. Well, Siege Rhino still seems good in the fair matchups. Wow, that, that was actually a really interesting match. That was a really close, really interesting match. <laughs> AG Mark, welcome to the fishbowl. Yeah, we got crushed by Lotus Field combo in, uh, in round one. And then ground out sacrifice deck. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, let's keep it going. A reminder that our show today is brought to you by Card Kingdom. If you need some, uh, if you need some magic cards, get them at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Ooh, hideaway Niv. I gotta say, on this week's Against the Odds, Widespread Thieving was very impressive. That was a card that we hadn't really played with yet, and, and I was really blown away by how strong it was. So the deck looks, the deck actually looks really sweet. How was Widespread Thieving meant for you and my, oh, this is Explorer. How's it better in Explorer? I mean, the list looks sweet. The only question with these decks and explorers, the mana is just like so wild. So many one ups. It looks like a commander mana base almost. But you get a lot of power. Like, and widespread thieving is a, a legit card. I'm surprised other people haven't woke up to widespread thieving. Selfless with hideaway instant speed. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That sounds that sounds super sweet. Oh yeah, the first round you didn't miss much. It was <laughs> it was a blowout. It wasn't it was mostly us just talking as we as we got smacked. All right. On to round number 3. So so chat, what is what is your vote on how we handle how do we handle the early access for the alchemy set? Here here are the three options. These are these are the three options and I want your vote and I want y'all to decide. It's 2 weeks from now, I believe. Option 1 is don't participate at all. Option 2 is play limited. Option 3 is do it like a normal a normal early access stream where we play brews, but the brews are gonna have to be alchemy. <laughs> so those are those are the three options. Alchemy constructed, because there's no there's no other there's no other formats. It's not like you play historic brawl. You can't play things like that. They're they're not options for early access day. They're not even on the client. So constructed limited skip <laughs> are the three the three options. Layer of the Hydra and Lanor Elves. Uh well we will shock ourselves and do some thought seizing mono greens are really good deck in this format hopefully we can thought seize oh well okay <clears throat> so opponent has two lands oh huh. this is tricky this is tricky so if we take kiora they play old growth troll and then we thought season take a million and take the Karn and then hope our opponent doesn't get to the Cavalier or that we draw removal. An actual, yeah, we can do, we can do an actual straw pull. Or if a mod, if there's any mods around that want to put up a, an actual pull on Twitch, that would also, that would also work. If we don't get a, a Twitch pull, I'll put up a straw pull in a minute. I think we gotta take Kiora. Yeah, take Kiora. Pass the turn. This is gonna be tough being on the draw. I would like our spot more if we were on the play. So here's the old growth troll. Yep. We gotta hope our opponent doesn't draw lands mostly. Our lands are so tapped. Ooh, okay. 
Well, yeah, we really need to draw an untapped land and hope our opponent does. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> and now we're dead. <laughs> Not only did they draw a land, they drew Nykthos. Um, a sip stream can happen sometime. Hey, what's up, Average Fox? How are you? People, people keep asking about it. So the poll is uh, for, for early access for the alchemy set. Skip it, draft it, constructed it. <laughs> There might be a better way of wording that last one. But basically, how do we interact with the early access day for for the alchemy set? The opponent gets and hits us. Well, if we don't draw an untapped land, we're just dead. I've seen some people saying that Mono Green Nykthos is the best deck in the format and that it's going to have to be banned. I don't know if that's actually true, but, I mean, that was that was turn three. That was turn three through double thought seize. Our opponent's got... Six, seven, eight mana, nine, ten, a ridiculous amount of mana, ten power on the battlefield, and that was after we thought seized two planeswalkers. So yeah, those those are the questions. Well, what do we have that can beat this deck, if anything? Uh huh. Hmm. None of these cards actually seem helpful. I mean, go blank is fine what do we have that's bad the fine finality is a little hit or miss Kalitas is okay hey what's up uh spaghetti how are you get your votes in for the for the early access day stream vanishing verse is good abrupt decay is probably sketchy or the sketchiest kuneros this only stops creatures. Uh, players can't cast spells. So it does stop flashback. Well, let's go blank. Go blank's probably one of our best bets. Go blank and. Uh, deck just goes so big. How do we stop it? You know what? What do you think about the idea of adding. Now, alchemy constructed is alchemy constructed. Like, uh, Historic is not an option for Early Access Day. It's it's actual sort of standardy, but with new cards and rebalances, that, that format, the Alchemy Alchemy. What is what is our poll saying? Skip the Alchemy set. Wow, play Alchemy Limited. Play Alchemy Constructed it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, there, there was that data that came out saying that... Saying that like two percent of games are alchemy or something, so even though those numbers look jarring, those actually might be the the numbers for like more enfranchised players. Like that might actually just legitimately be how people feel about alchemy that are heavily enfranchised. I think it might be different for newer players, but yeah, Assassin's Trophy could be good. That's what I was gonna say. What do you think about land hate in this format? What do you think about the idea of adding... Oh, this is like the fairest. The fairest of them all. It does not get much fairer than this deck. <laughs> do you think there should be land, more land hate in Pioneer? If you think about it, Lotus Field, a deck that is at the top of the meta, people have you know had some rumblings about maybe it being too good. And then you got... And then you got uh, Nykthos, which is one of the best decks in the meta. Blood Moon, I'm just saying, I'm just saying Blood Moon would solve all of those problems. Every every single one, every single one would be solved. By a simple, maybe Blood Moon's a good guy, the hero. Oh, strip mine, strip mine. Or what about like, the weird thing about Pioneer is it is a very modern format. So you don't even have the land, you don't really have much of the land hate that you have in a format like modern. It's not like you got even stone rain effects or molten rain effects. Opponent goes digging, finds a land, plays an Elvish Mystic. Well, play Isolated Chapel. Query on Dryad and Blood Chiefsers. I think the easiest way to fight this deck is just keep things off the battlefield, but we're running out of removal now. 
Yeah, it looks like Skip is the, the big winner. I'm honestly surprised Limited didn't do better. I thought Play Limited might be somewhat popular, but apparently not. Opponent, gonna do some stomping. Oh, go blank. So we can go blank our opponent to one card in hand. Oh, that's probably gonna be worth it. Go blank you. Would have been nice to get all the cards, but hopefully this means our opponent doesn't get to do anything good next turn. Opponent discards two lands. Okay. Why did our opponent keep this hand? Why would they keep all mana? <laughs> all right, opponent goes to 17. What is the big whammy? A voter that taps, plays a Wolf of Haven. Okay, and a old growth troll. Well, I really want to draw cards with this. Uh, one, two, three, four. You know what's bigger than an old growth troll? You know what's bigger than an old growth troll? That is a that's a Rido. <laughs> Move over, old growth troll. Well, pass the turn, opponent untaps. They do have, oh, come on now. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Nisa, off the top. Well, we will thin the deck, that's pretty bad. Oh, I forgot how much I hated Nissa. Um. Well, now I guess we have to exile the old growth troll. Exile the old growth troll. Send everything at Nissa. Absent Charms actually felt pretty good. So get rid of that. Grower dorks. Everything at Nissa. Opponent. Wow, let's Nissa go. Okay, well, good. We got a shot. We got a shot. Let's scavenge you use. Uh, is viewer submitted Commander Clash coming up soon? Yes. Next week's episode is going to have the call for viewer submitted decks. So get your sweetest decks ready. About it. Hits us. Down to 20. All right. Makes a wolf. Um... Hmm. Well, get in, hit ya. Oh, it takes it. I don't cycle the triome. Come on. Something good. Removal, maybe? Well, that's not the removal we wanted. <laughs> Pass the turn. Not the best time for the Thoughtseize. Pwn, just draws a land. I mean, Thoughtseize does grow the Dryad, I guess. Ooh, Abrupt Decay is not the worst. Uh, well, Thoughtseize, you. <laughs> grow the Dryad. <laughs> At least it's doing something. So what's good, in, what's good in Popper these days? It's been a minute since I played Popper. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Attack. Nah, eh, let's not attack with that. Attack, attack. The Query and Dryad's actually been good. It's actually been good here. Opponent blocks. Drops to five. Well, our opponent's going to need a top deck. A real, real top deck. Put it taps. Is it a real, real top deck? It is not. And opponent scoops it up. Take that mono green. Uh, the famous B. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Yeah, this must actually work that game. Deadly Dispute. Yeah, I've, I've heard some people, I was talking to a Pauper player, and they were making it sound like all the artifact synergies were maybe a negative for the format. Uh, affinity versus Sack. You got all the like affinity lands. You got the affinity, uh, the artifact lands. You got uh, Experimental Synthesizer. You got Deadly Dispute. So it's all just artifact synergies at this point, really. Should Seth make a Popper stream video? Popper's one of those things that ah, y'all say you want it, but then when there's actually a Popper streamer video, no one watches it. 
That's been my my popper experience recently. It's one of those things that sounds really good, but then I don't know. It, I mean, it could be fun. It could be a fun as like a is a is a one off. But yeah, for some reason, it's it's not a very popular format to watch. That doesn't mean we should never play it. Like I think even if the format's not popular, I think it's good to play sometimes. But very fun to watch. I mean, Popper is unique. It is a, traditionally, and maybe it's different now because I haven't played it recently, but traditionally it's like a very grindy two for one. Uh, if you see if you can outvalue your opponent style of format, like that's what I mostly associate with, with Popper. Hmm. Maybe we're going to want, Ab well, Abzan Charmed Exiles. Maybe it's fine finality. Yeah, let's get on fine finality. Bring in one more rub to gate. Run it like that. We really need something to do on turn one, really, I think, in this matchup. Oh, Turbo Fox. When I did play Pop, there was a time many, many years ago when I actually played Popper. Hmm. Well, let's get some white mana. Where I actually played Popper fairly regularly. And, uh,. <laughs> There was a deck. Oh my god, this deck. It was a capsized control deck. Probably you would not associate it with me. You would think of you would think of Krim, a very Krim deck. But it was a it was a control deck. Oh, all right. Well, Fatal pushed the elf. Opponent did a bunch of mulliganing. We just need a white source. If we draw a white source, this hand hopefully beats our opponent's mulligan. Um about it. Sylvan carry added. And white mana, not quite. Well, thought sees you. Fiora Cavalier. Hmm. They're two lands away from this. Yeah, let's take the Kiora. Hey, Barbie, what are you what are you barking at, bud? <laughs> About it. Oh, no. I might have to go see where a bear is in a minute. I hear loud barking outdoors. <laughs> All right. That's slow. That's slow mana, but that's mana. All right. Let's see. Hang on. I might. But hang on. I got to. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I got to go see where bear is. Bear me. Hey, Bobby. Come say hi to everyone. You gotta apologize. You made me get up in the middle of the stream. Come apologize. Come here, bear. Come here. Bear me. Come here. See? Come here. Oh, Bubby. You gotta say you gotta say you're sorry. You gotta apologize to everyone. Here. You want a treat? Come here. Oh. Oh, this way, big boy. Oh. Here, can you get up and say hi? Oh, you're getting too big for this. There you go, big boy. He's okay. He's okay. You okay, Bubby? You okay, big boy? <laughs> he's a heavy breather. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a hundred. Okay, you can get down. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Good boy. He's 130 pounds now. Um, <laughs> there's this poor kid. I live in the middle of nowhere. Like literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, he lives up to his name. Literally in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by cornfields. Like, the most rural area you could think of. And, and there's this one kid that lives, like, a mile down the road. And I feel so bad for him. Because he just wants to ride his bike. <laughs> he just rides his bike back and forth down these country roads where no one's around. And it drives Bear crazy. Uh, whenever he drives by her house, Bear just, he barks at him and barks at him and <laughs> scares the poor kid because Bear's huge. He just scares the, I'm assuming, scares the poor kid to death. So he, the kid was riding by and Bear was out on the porch just <laughs> just barking and barking. So that is, that's the Bearby way. 
uh, opponent, Mo Haven. Sure. I mean, we got our white mana, though, so we should be good here. Opponent's got a Cavalier that they're almost to, but we can't answer it. I thought this would be fine. Brody Man, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super duper, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, the monastery, uh, the monastery mentor reprints pretty, pretty solid. I mean, it's still like twenty bucks. Oh my, bear me. <laughs> Leave the kid, and now he's barking at him out the window. <laughs> Leave the poor kid alone, bud. He's just riding his bike. He's not. He's not coming in here. You're good. <laughs> uh, all right white mana uh untap it's funny because bear like loves people too he is just he's the most people person-y dog and he loves them all but i guess it's i don't i don't know he's defending the house or something yeah that's he's super nice to everyone except kids on bikes <laughs> and i don't think i mean he wouldn't hurt him but he definitely will bark at him i'm a little disappointed that wizards Wow, this seems weird, but I actually think our best play here is to blow up Wolf Willow Haven. <laughs> uh, we didn't play a land. Actually, maybe we just draw two? Like, what's the worst thing that happens? The worst thing that happens, they go land Cavalier Nick those. And then we kill the Cavalier. We do need to hit our lands. All right, let's draw two cards. Grow the Dryad. Hopefully hit our land drops. All right, there's a land. Pass the turn. Uh, I think we're, we're okay-ish. Pass the turn. See what our opponent finds. About it untaps. Now, it is not an edict. Exile, creature power through a greater. Draw two, lose two. Two counters on something. Karn. All right, Karn. Four. I mean, we got an answer. We got multiple answers to this. Dark Seal Citadel plays the land. Sure. I mean, this is fine. This is fine. Opponent. I don't think Bear's ever seen a unicycle, honestly. <laughs> Probably the same as bikes, but. Uh, all right. One, two, three, and four. Actually, this might even be better. I'm so tempted to kill this Wolf Willow Haven to keep, try to keep our opponent from doing anything. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, what do you think? Never seen a card played outside of pre-modern and ancient formats. Oh, the Coriander I had? Yeah, it doesn't normally see playing Pioneer. It's been decent, though. It's, it's growing. It's growing. Hmm, hard to pass up a free Siege Rhydo, but uh, keeping this deck off mana is so tempting. I also, uh, Siege Rhydo is just uh, one of my favorite cards to cast too. I think we're going to... Blow up the Wolf Willow Haven. Oh, this is probably... St Silly. You know what? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, let's do it. Blood the Wolf Willow Haven. Grow the Dryad. Keep our opponent as low on mana as possible. Kind of like Land Destroy. Basically, basically a stone rain. <laughs> basically a stone rain here. Go to combat. Kill the Karn. So the Karn basically was <laughs> four mana get a land. All right, pass the turn. And then we can Vanishing Verse the cavalier if they get it down about it kiora okay and passes one two three four hmm yeah kill it <laughs> Grow the Curiander. This Curiander is going off. It's going off. It's going off, going off. Uh, probably should tap differently to leave up this Vanishing Verse, actually. Get in, hit ya. That might have been better to leave it up. Bone it. Takes four. Is Curiandriad actually a good card? Ooh, there's still a chance Smothering Tithe would be in. Smothering Tithe would be a good reprint. About it. Yeah, I kind of regret not shocking to leave up Vanishing Verse here. Opponent. 
Karn again. Sure, sure, sure. What are you finding this time? I think we're in good shape to take him down, though. Yeah, it is a bad top deck. Traditionally, it's played in kind of cantrippy decks, which does help if you're playing, like, Brainstorms and Ponders and so forth. We're not very cantrippy. We really want to unturn two in this deck. Not sure if it's the right choice, but it is working out this game. Golgari Lock. Golgari Lock it. Golgari Lock it. Okay. I have not seen that since Ravnica Limited. <laughs> uh, all right. So... In that case, I mean, I think we start, uh, let's just, okay, let's crack the fetch, thin the deck. I think we get down, uh, we're going to wait one more turn on the Siege Rhino. One, two, three, four, five. Ob, uh, start the card drawing. <laughs> this is the real Ob. Uh, this might be, do you think this could be better than the three man Ob? Uh, it's been good. It's probably not actually better than the three man Ob, uh, but. I think that people have forgotten about Omnixilis Reignited. It's like actually a good card. Is it Charm in Monastery? Oh boy. Whew. I mean, I guess Popper's in for a shakeup. Also, 10th District Legionnaire. That's a, that's a big one. I think that's going to show up in the Heroic decks. All right, opponent's got the Locket. And carry added. Well... Okay, blow up your locket. <laughs> We're just not letting your opponent keep this extra mana. Dryad's up to a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, oh, this is this is scoop time. This is scoop time for our poor opponent. Uh, Siege, well, let's draw first to be responsible. Siege, Rhino, you. Grow the Dryad. Give our opponent <laughs> at least a brief moment of hope as we smash them for seven. Because we want to get in this damage before they scoop. Hit ya. And then just to seal the deal, <laughs> even though we got in one less damage, uh, go blank you. <laughs> wow. This was a destruction of mono green. This was Rhino just absolutely smashing the best deck of the format into the ground and our opponent scoops it up and that was oh that was so good we even got distracted by the bear barking and we still just crushed them maybe this deck's good maybe this deck's not bad yeah that was that felt really good it always feels nice when you play against one of the best decks in the format and you're just able to pick them apart like that so what are the let's look at the let's look at the popper stuff real quick. If you're a popper player, which apparently based on the poll, a lot of people play popper, at least like popper. What of the new cards do you think are actually gonna actually gonna have an impact on the format? We we'll get more comments tomorrow, I'm sure, with the spoiler dump. But we get uh, so mana leak was already common. Is it charm new to common? Probably somewhat relevant, I would say. Swift Spear, definitely a million percent relevant. Militia Bugler, there could be a home for that. Popper's all about two for ones, all about grinding it out with two for ones. And this is a two for one. Like it's a, a three mana two three that draws a card when it comes into play. That's the kind of thing Popper sees. The other cards I think are interesting. Cartel Aristocrat, pretty sure this is first time in common. Uh, there have been like fringy sack decks, so that could possibly make an impact on the format. Uh, and, uh, Lava Coil, maybe, maybe Lava Coil could do something. Uh, Tenth Thirstic Legionnaire, I'm actually pretty high on just because of the heroic style decks. So I think Goblin Dark Dweller, from rare, from rare down to common, not very often that you get rares that show up, so. Uh, BTE. Yeah, Burning Tree Emissary has been common since, uh, a couple, a couple of Master sets ago. Although, uh, although it is a, a decent, a decent card, of course. Ooh, Goblin Storm. I, I just saw someone post a deck list of Cycling Storm. If I play Pauper, I kind of want to play the Cycling Storm deck. Oh, I didn't, I didn't finish my Pauper story. When I used to play Pauper pretty regularly, uh, not for content, just to make people miserable. I played Capsize Control. Oh, that deck was so sweet. <laughs> The main plan was just to capsize all your opponent's permanents and uh, until they until they gave up their will to play magic. And it was so beautiful when it worked. It was just all removal, all counters, mystical teachings to get the capsize. And then the alt win con was uh, was the mill curse that like mills to a turn. So you just like super slowly and painfully <laughs> make your opponent mill two cards as you bounce their lands every turn with uh, with capsize. Oh, that was that was a thing of beauty. 
I think I'm really a dirty control player at heart. <laughs> I just hide that well. That's my that's my dirty magic secret. No one no one knows. No one knows. I actually <laughs> I actually like I, but it's also kind of prisony, so I think that's part of it. No, this was not this was just blue black. This was just like blue black control. No no Tron lands or anything like this was like hit your land drops up to six mana, cap size. Uh cap size gets better if you have Tron mana, but yeah, I do I do just like making people not play magic. So yeah, I guess if you think of it that way, like capsize prison. And all the counters were just so we could live long enough to get to, to the prison part. Uh hey, what's up, Stick? Uh we are playing Pioneer tonight. So we do play Arena as well. But uh Pioneer is a format that isn't on Arena yet. It will be, hopefully, someday. Uh, they're they're working they're working on it they're working on it so uh, we play a mixture uh, if we're playing standard or explorer then we play on arena and if we're playing modern or uh, pioneer then we play on magic online just because arena doesn't have it opponent takes a fatal push eh sure <laughs> got him always nice when you draw what they thought sees although less nice when it happens to you trespasser blood tithe harvester fatal push. Well, I mean, oh, Castle Lock Lane. All right, take the Blood Tithe Harvester. Pass the turn. Do you think it would be too strong if cards like this could could hit lands? Like, is Wizards Blanket rule against anything? Just, oh, opponent draws a Thossies. Is Wizards Blanket rule against anything being able to destroy a land? Like, is that necessary? Well, now if I had known our opponent was going to top deck another Thoughtseize, I would have taken the Trespasser. So this actually works out pretty poorly for us. Uh, okay. Land go. So now we're going to have to kill the Trespasser and discard a card. That's not great. Yeah, I mean, maybe not this card in specific. Maybe the instant speed aspect makes it too good. Well, all right. We do have to kill it. And then I guess we discard the Mythos? Ouch. Graveyard Trespasser is so good. Like, it, it's an automatic two for one. Hard not. Ooh, okay. Hard for it not to be a two for one. Absent Charm's not bad. We do not mind drawing cards. We gotta get to our Rhinos. That's our, that's our competitive advantage in this mid range battle. We got the Rhinos. Our opponent. Like. Oh, God. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, sure. That's another good magic card. Are we getting out mid-range? We might be. Well, Abzan Charm, draw two. Land, land. Untap. And another land. All right, Fable Passage. Fatal Push. Well, those were not the cards we wanted to draw into. <laughs> not even close past the turn. Non-basic, yeah, that could that could work. Even if you limit it to non-basics. I think I'd like to see more land hate, though, in some of these formats. Bonnet does some filtering. Oh. Everything in this Rakdos deck is a two-for-one, isn't it? I think just every single card is a two-for-one. About it. Passing. All right. Uh, cycle the Triome. Not feeling great, though. Into. Well, that is a Rhino. I don't know if it beats two Kiki G. Oh, that's two Rhinos. Okay, two Rhinos might be two Kiki Jikis. One, probably not. Two might. Reprint Ice Account of Scepter at Orm's Chant. <laughs> I don't think Pioneer players could deal with the Scepter Chant lock. <laughs> that's not even modern. I don't even know if modern players can deal with the Scepter Chant lock. <laughs> I mean, it'd probably be fine in modern. Modern, there's so many answers to it. Uploaded. Pioneer, though, would probably be a little bit busted. Wow. Wow, we're getting absolutely owned. There goes our Siege Rhino to this Croxa. Oh, this is not enjoyable. Opponent, they also drew another Fatal Push. Jeez, um, well, I mean, I don't know what to say. 
That was, I mean, we saw our opponent's hand not that long ago, and it was a graveyard trespasser to fatal push. I mean, I guess that's the power of chaining together Fable of the Mirror Breakers, is you're just gonna, you're gonna make your hand whatever you want it to be, but wow, that was, that was brutal. That was super duper, 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 duper brutal. Uh, we might bring in our entire sideboard if we can find room. <laughs> I don't, what do y'all think about Kunaros? I kind of feel like Kunaros is not, it doesn't feel like it's been good. Yeah, I mean, the Rakdos deck just, it's all, it's all two for ones. <laughs> we don't have enough lands to really go 75 cards. Yeah, I kind of, maybe Kunaros is not, huh. Kunaros just dies too much. Even in the matchups where it's good, it dies. It dies so often. Dryad's not going to stick in this matchup. We need things that do stuff right away. Thoughtseize is bad. You don't want to be the one casting the Thoughtseize in a matchup like this, really. Yeah, we could go down. We could go to 24 lands. Speaking of lands... I wish we had a. I wish we had Castle Lockway, and that's one thing that we're missing. I used to play Kunaros and Pioneer, but I think it stays in the center mostly over. Yeah, this deck, I mean, it has been pretty successful, and it has a lot of cards that are like that. Nixless, Siege Ride, Aquarian Riot that I don't think anyone's ever played. Yeah, it probably needs more Protect. Like, its effect is good. 3 mana 3-3 three, three with a bunch of mechanics and, and a hate card ability. Like, those are all good things. Which, maybe if you just played as a creature, it's fine. Maybe if you don't think of it like, okay, this is my way to stop a graveyard, a degenerate graveyard deck. Maybe it's fine, just a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three lifelink with the upside that you might hate on the graveyard. But when you start thinking of it as... As a... As, like, your primary hate card, I feel like it maybe gets worse. Ooh, seems good, though. Hmm... Mythos. Maybe something like that. Let's. All right, we we did a massive change to the deck. Yeah, recipes is hard to play in the main deck. Like the upside of Kunaros, it is it is a three three life linker. Like against mono red or something, so much better than a one land. So much better than a than a rest in peace, which isn't very good at all. Um, huh. So assume we're getting thought seized multiple times. What do we keep? What do we keep? Verse is better than thirst here. Oh, maybe it is. I was worried about getting Croxa, but yeah, some amount of ward would be helpful. Hmm. Um, ooze to the bottom, maybe? Oh, I did. Yeah, I was. I saw the, I saw the dino deck. The dino deck looks sweet. Other than... I don't know about all the X ones with a uh, Marauding Raptor. That part looked a little sketchy, but other than, I mean, I guess you're trying to play him first anyway, but I feel like Graveyard Trespasser is better in Kunaros. In a mid-range deck, it's like a walking two for one that, yeah, that is very likely. I'm coming to that. <laughs> I'm coming to that understanding too after playing this deck. I sort of feel like we should just be playing maybe some other cards in that slot like kunaros maybe kunaros is a sideboard card oh null hide's such a sweet card i don't think we play it in this deck but i do think null hide deserves more more respect bear be chill bud chill bub when will the arena economy uh be fixed i don't want to be the one to break this to you but <laughs> i would say the most likely answer is never <laughs> I mean when the game starts to die maybe maybe when the game starts to die but I don't think it's high Barry, chill bud chill you got chill we're doing a stream all right opponent's gonna stomp our face that's the real question when will pioneer be there Barry, hey bud chill you're getting too wild go eat your treats opponent Bone crush a giant. Well, I think we're still gonna draw cards here. Green, white, black. Uh, draw cards. Lose some life. All right, that's fine. Lands are fine. Opponent passing. Opponent's off to a much slower 
start. Play the Triome, and... Yeah, I guess we just got a pass and vanishing verse. Pass the turd, pass the turd. And just want some rhinos. Uh, can Bear to take up needle point? Yeah, he he needs he needs something that's more relaxing. He gets, I mean, he's super good and he's super chill. But then what happens is he's good for like two to three hour stretches. I mean, he's always good. But what happens is I sit down to do like a stream or record a gameplay video for like three hours, and usually he's great for the first couple hours, and then, and then um. Between hour two and hour three, towards uh, towards the end, that's when he starts to get a little restless. He gets a little bit restless. Well. I guess we Gideon. Start making knights. Play the Blooming Marsh. Gideon versus Soren. Who wins? Who wins? Bear will be a year old in a couple of weeks. Has there been any announcement of when we'll start seeing changes in Moto since other companies started working on it? There has been a surprising lack of news about Moto stuff. Um, not direct stuff, unfortunately. I, it's something I'm waiting on, too. Like, it makes me a little nervous. I feel like Moto's slightly slipping, which kind of, in, kind of discourages me like we didn't get commander legends 2 after we got commander legends 1 we're getting less of the commander precon cards i haven't been hearing any announcements about double masters coming to moto although maybe it will and i just haven't heard it about it passes hmm I mean, this is going to work, right? There's no way. Uh, yeah, I mean, get rid of the sword and fire up the, fire up the gids. Hopefully this is fine. Gideon, Ally is Endegar, the busted planeswalker before busted planeswalkers. I think that Gideon, if it was printed more recently, it probably would have been complained about. Like, it was the card of its standard. Popper Affinity is pretty great. Uh, if you like drawing cards, I do enjoy drawing cards. So let's say we do play a popper video affinity. Is that what you'd recommend? Like if we do do popper, what do you, what do you want to see? It's all affinity versus sack is the, the main archetypes. I guess that's sort of interesting about it. <laughs> it makes a couple of dorks. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess that means our Soren lives. Opponent blocks. Soren goes to one. Well, let's. It's Rhino time. Bear Bay. What are you destroying? Uh, all right, Rhino down. I think we hold on to the land because of Croxa and pass the turn. Oh boy, in modern man culture, collected company would have been banned. Siege Rhino might have been banned. Opponent takes up Fable of the Mia Brega. Our deck should probably have Castle Lockwain too. At least a copy or two. Castle Lockwain's so good in decks like this. Mogwarts or Cascade Wall? Wait, what are what are those words? Ooh, Siege Rhino. Enough toughness to survive a Chandra, which is nice. Takes up for mana. Fable of the Mia Brega. It's a lot of lot of value. A lot of value in our opponent's side of the battlefield. Um well. Kill the token. Untap. Oh, voice is fine. Voice of resurgence. Oh, Mogwarts is Goblin Combo. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. I've never, I've never heard that name for it. I know, I know what you mean. Interesting. Mogwarts. Where's the name come from, though? So, Mog Goblin. What about the Warts? Hmm. Yeah, that's a cool deck. I could see, I could see enjoying playing that. Uh, well, I guess we fire up the Gideon. 
go to combat. Should we just be attacking face? And forgetting about... Should we just be attacking face? And <laughs> Bear. Bubby. You're so wild today, bud. It's just a car going by. <laughs> ah! Um, yeah, Cascade could be sweet, too. Oh, see, I've never watched Harry Potter or read Harry Potter. <laughs> it would probably make way more sense if I if I had read those. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that with the, the loud puppy. <laughs> he doesn't bark very often, but when he does, he, he really does. Uh, hmm. So if we send Gideon at Chandra, this at Soren, this at our opponent, we kill a Planeswalker for sure. On the other hand, if we send everything at our opponent, our opponent blocks here, drops to four, and then hopefully we just win next turn. Oh. It might be right to go face. Is this like, like Pioneer Modern Jund? Kind of like Pioneer Modern Abzan. But yeah, it is. It kind of is. You know what? I think we ignore the Planeswalkers. Maybe we live to regret this, but yeah, everything face. I think our job is to close out the game before the Planeswalkers matter. Yeah. You get to keep your Planeswalkers, opponent. Let's look at the Pauper meta. All right, so opponent blocks Gids. Drops to four. And then we will go blank you. Opponent discards two lands. Well, isolated chapel. Opponent's a four. Can we close it out? Can our opponent get, opponent gets to see a ton of cards. Fable the Mirror Breaker sees two. Chandra sees one. Soren, probably making a lifelinker, but might see one. Opponent, discards, discards. And I wonder if this was ah, too aggro. I will see. So, Pauper Meta. Teamer, oh, wait, is this a real deck? Thermocrast? Booty Acid Moss? Wait, is it, can I be competitive with this? Can I actually, can I actually win with... <laughs> With Gruel Land Destruction and random Cascade spells? And Mall Drifters? Oh, this is this is my kind of deck. I, I could get behind I could get behind that deck. Opponent. Somehow kills our siege right now. How do they Oh, Coligan's Command plus Chandra. And they make a life linker. <laughs> hmm. Okay. This lifelink's an issue. So if we get an attack with everything. Oh, emblem plus rhino. Ah, it's not lethal, but. Yes, it's tough. We wanted that Rhino to stay on the battlefield. Losing that was pretty was pretty painful. Yes, lifelink's the issue. So if we fire up Gideon and swing with everything, opponent goes to seven, block here, block here. They lose something. Yeah, Rhino is probably better after combat. The question is, what are we doing with the Gideon? We can emblem it to grow these things in attack. That might be better. Like, if there's any way we can bait our opponent into taking damage, then things get way more exciting. You know what? I think that might work. We're going to emblem. Go to combat. Because this kind of incentivizes our opponent to just trade the Trespasser because this vampire is not doing much. 
And if our opponent does that, okay, they're going to double block, so they're going to gain life. So we don't win. Um... Yeah, I guess we got to kill the lifelink token, unfortunately. Wow, opponent goes to four. One out of rhino range. Play the rhino. One. Come on, deck. If we lose from him, I'm going to be so sad. Ken FTW, welcome to the fishbowl. Opponent flips the saga. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Two cards. Takes up. Bone Crusher Giant. That's a blocker. That's a blocker. Is it enough? Opponent stomps the Gideon. It is. That's going to keep our opponent alive. You know what we need? We need a Rhino. We need a Rhino off the top. Opponent. Oh, my sweet mother. Oh. Wow. Their draw was a Fatal Push and a Bone Crusher. Oh. oh, yeah, we're, well, come on, Rhino. Come on, Rhino, right this second. That was a very unfortunate uh, series of draws for our opponent there. Yeah, well, Rhino, please. Come on, Rhino. It's a godless shrine and game. Oh, that's. That's real bad. Mm. That was close. That was super close. Munez, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup for you. <sighs> yeah, we're just dead, right? So this flips. Pony goes to four. Pony goes to five. Four goes to six. We're out of rhino range. This can copy this. Seven, eight. Chandra. Yeah, there's that does it. Still have a chance? Wait, what would our what would our chance be from there? Oh, it was a godless shrine, not a rhino, unfortunately. The problem is a rhino's not good enough next turn. Next turn next turn our opponents Our opponents got Lifelink Vampire to get out of Rhino range. Yeah, it's just not... A Rhino doesn't do it in the future. <sighs> I don't know. Was going... Was going aggro the right call or not? I mean, it's hard to say. At the same time, like... <sighs> our opponent did spin... Fatal Push, Sworn at 2 Loyalty to Trigger Evil, into Bone Crusher to kill the Gideon, like... That was that was a pretty impressive string of cards that they had on the top of their deck. So I think like the plan of trying to kill our opponent would have maybe people would have a different impression of it if our opponent didn't top deck double removal spell that turn. <laughs> so I don't know. Hey, what's up, uh, your Michello? We're uh. We're doing the, the typical Abzan thing. We're, we're about 50-50. Uh, <laughs> exactly 50-50 at the moment. Siege Rhino's been good. Unless our opponent top decks Fatal Push every turn. <laughs> then it's less good. Uh, what are the chances of Mosley and Wonder in Curious Obsession getting reprints? I need them, but they are more expensive than I thought. Uh, so everything will be reprinted eventually. Uh, unless it's like you know, on the, on the reserve list, so it can't be reprinted, but Wizards, Wizards is reprinting everything. Mosley and Wonder just recently kind of creeped up in price. I could see it being a while, like another master set away uh, until it actually gets reprinted, which eh, could be a year or two. Curious Obsession. The other thing about Mausoleum Wonder is it doesn't really see Commander play. Stuff that sees playing Commander is super easy to get reprinted because every sense of Commander is set. There's a million Commander precons, so anything that has any Commander relevance is a good bet to get reprinted fairly fast. Just like Pioneer cards or Modern cards like Mausoleum Wonder, that's where it gets a little more hit or miss. Opponent, Humans. 
All right, and experiment one. Oh, experiment one's new to Popper for the first time too, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Now well, let's play a Dryad. Double Dryad, we'll see what removal our opponent has. About it attempts. And unclaimed territory on human. Well, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Opponent gets in, hits us. Well, uh, I would have liked to play another Dryan, but I guess we just have to uh, kill something. But what? Now kill the Thalia. Grow the Dryad. Play the land, hit you at Fort 2. Yeah, this is much less exciting with the Thalia taxing us. Double Dryad, kill your uh, experiment one would have been really sweet. Why don't you play Momir anymore? Uh, mostly because, well, part of it is more streams happen on Arena, and Momir isn't a thing on Arena. And then we've had a lot of streams that have just already went... Uh, went through the entire stream playing our leagues. We've been doing a lot more streams where we play multiple decks. So Arena originally started as kind of a, a time filler at the end of the stream if we had some some extra time, but our league had already finished. Sally is Lieutenant. All right, opponent's going for it. Hmm, well, okay, Korean Dryad. Oh, we probably got to kill the Catilda. Yeah, kill the Catilda. Grow the Dryads. Overgrow Tomb. Hit you for three. I mean, I guess we're the aggro again. We do have a lot of removal, which is nice. We might be able to do a Momir game tonight. We also need to, uh, we also need to have someone to play Momir with. So that's the other that's the other thing. Does anyone does anyone have Momir? Might be up for some uh, Momir if you're interested. Definitely a possibility. Um, this would probably be the last match of our league, so we might be able to do a game of Momir after. Opponent. Brutal Cathar is pretty brutal. Gets and hits us. Sure, sure, sure. If we get to six mana, this fine finality could actually be great. Whether or not we get there is up for debate. Well, let's uh, draw two cards, lose two life. Oh, not good, not good, not good. No lands. Thought sees you. Oh, golly gee willikers. Well, hopefully they don't draw land. Oh, Missy on land there is bad. That means we can't get to the fine finalities. About it. Undaps. If they draw land in Coca, we're, oh, in super bad shape. <laughs> About it. No lands? No lands, no lands? Uh, would you be down for cubing for one of the streams before it leaves on Wednesday? Uh, possibly. Oh, opponent's going to pass and flip. Hmm. So we're going to have our entire deck hidden behind this Brutal Cathar. Well, uh, query on Dryad. And... Oh, we've had so many... We've had no problem hitting lands. <laughs> no problem hitting lands this league. And now when we really need it to find finality, we cannot hit these lands at all. About it. I know I never really play challenges now. Is this another brutal Cathar? Elite Spellbinder. How about some lands? How about some lands? <laughs> they would be so good. <sighs> awkward, so awkward takes the thought sees. At least our opponent can't attack much. Opponent passes. That's not a land. I mean the siege rhino is a good card. 
Not a card that necessarily beats the two Cocos that are going to be coming, but see, he's right, Elgro, the Dryads. And <laughs> pass the turn. <laughs> Maybe I'm starting to think fine finality might be bad. I don't think have we gotten literally any value out of this this entire league. I don't think we've I don't think we've gotten any value. Like not even exaggerating. Like I think it's zero value. Opponent reflector mage grows the dorks. Probably gonna bounce. I assume the big dryad. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, put it. Gets in, hits us. Yeah, if they if they just keep drawing cocos, we're fine. Uh, I mean, I love rhinos. I do love me some rhinos, but that is still not a land. Rhino, grow the dork. Drain you. Get in with the rhino, I guess. We gotta do something. about it <laughs> you know they're gonna eventually they're gonna draw land like your opponent's also not drawing lands opponent takes it this oh my goodness okay this does put our opponent in siege rhino range opponents at three that does mean if we top deck rhino number three in a row we win oh my god another thalia's lieutenant uh-huh sure yeah 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 Grows the dorks, grows the dorks. Goes to combat. Attacks. Come on, deck. Rhino, Rhino, Rhino. <laughs> Rhino up the top. Rhino Tron for the win. Oh, it'd be such a sweet, that'd be such a sweet Rhino win. Down to 10, opponent passes. Uh, there's the land. The land that we didn't want. Um, the question is, are we dead now? Like, now Fine Finality is bad. We can't recast the Rhino because it's too much mana because we don't believe in drawing lands. Uh, Query on Dryad. Play the land. Uh, pass the turn, I guess. So opponent, one, two, three. If we attack with a Rhino, we die, right? So we attack here. Opponent kills it. Block, block, block. Likely. Uh, too risky. I mean, maybe we go to one. Maybe? So if we attack with a Rhino, well, the problem is, so we attack with a Rhino, our opponent blocks with Thalia's Lieutenant, so it just dies, it does nothing. And then if they swing back with their team, we have to block here. We have to block here. We have to block here. Three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, yeah, maybe that's our best bet. We would be dead to Coco. Like, land kills us, right? They draw land... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So basically, we'd be betting on our opponent hitting a land or not hitting a land. Yeah, we don't have a way to kill it though, unfortunately. Oh yeah, if we can't, we can't cast a second spell. You're right. Yeah, if we cast a second spell, we lose. This flipping, we lose instantly. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just gotta, we gotta pass. Close! Uh, why no finality? Because it costs six mana, unfortunately. <laughs> and we're only at five. We've been, it would have been really good a couple turns ago. It's getting less good by the moment, but uh, yeah, that was, <laughs> that's what we were hoping for many turns. We just could not hit the lands for it. Opponent grows the dorks, grows the dorks. Oh, this is so close. We really need to hit a land. Like, a land is good in a bunch of ways. A land lets us sweep. A land lets us get a rhino back and cast it and win. It's all about a land. The fact that we've drawn these... I mean, I guess our opponents drawn Cocos that have done nothing, too, so it's kind of even, but... Oh, these two fine finales have been so incredibly, incredibly bad this game. About it.
goes to combat. Attacks. Attacks. Hmm. Why do they want the Thales Lieutenant to die? That's suspicious. <laughs> huh. That is very, very, very suspicious. Uh, We're going to block it, I think. That is super, super weird. They're not a black deck, so they can't have Fatal Push. That is, it's very sus. I mean, we're blocking, but it is sus. Okay. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. <laughs> okay. Well, so. We should win, right? We attack with a rhino. I mean, I guess the question... <laughs> The question is, how does our opponent block? <laughs> the problem is our opponent can block in ways that keep him alive. So we can't swing. Oh, wow, this is, what a weird game. So, okay, here's what can happen. We swing with both Rhydos. If our opponent blocks with Thalia's Lieutenant, we win. But if they're like, hmm, that's suspicious, and they like block Reflector Mage Werewolf Pack Leader, then we lose. We can find Finality. We win Finality, but then our opponents... Uh, well, I guess we wouldn't straight up lose, because the two counters... The two counters could keep a query on Dryad alive. I think we attack with one Rhino. So this Dryad's gonna die. This one can live. What if we Wrath first? Zero power, zero power, two, two. I think we attack with a Rhino. Oh, we're also getting a Dryad back from under the Brute, which helps. All right, go to combat. Let's attack with a Rhino. I think this is fine. See how our opponent reacts to the one Rhino attack. Opponent not going to kill it. Yeah, the, the question is how to get the rhino in the graveyard. Yeah, the problem is our opponent, yeah, it's uh, suspicious because of, well, they actually kind of know because of the spellbinder. So they probably know if the rhino dies, they're in trouble. The good news is we can go wrath mode, which I think is hopefully still good enough. Finality. Grow the dryad. Grow the Dryad. Counters on this Dryad. And this still gets a Rhino in the graveyard for next turn. So as long as we survive this turn, we get the Rhino back, cast the Rhino, drain him out next turn. So we, yeah, we still, this does still get us there. It takes two turns, but have the best place of all time. Well, catch me. I appreciate that. That is a uh, contentious opinion. <laughs> If you ask around, some people think I have the worst voice of all time. Other people love it, so I appreciate it. <laughs> An opponent. Oh, all right, Rhino. All right. If we win this, we get a treasure chest. We get a treasure chest. So that was a weird game. Our opponent, we know they had multiple Cocos and didn't hit land number three. We had multiple fine finalities, and I guess we're the winner because we hit the lands, but we also were stuck on lands for a long time. Oh, well, thank you, Nipple Nugget. It actually, <laughs> Nipple Nugget, it, uh, it actually doesn't, uh, it doesn't bother me. It's like fine wine. It's an, it's an acquired taste. Not everyone appreciates it right away, but give people a little time. <laughs> well, we already got all our removal in the main deck. Go Blank doesn't seem great. Calitas is fine. Ooze, probably not. Voice gets bounced. Kuneros, 
doesn't well oh yeah kunaros doesn't actually shut down coco that's right it's like your graph digger's cage but only for the graveyard hey what's up uh Vortness? how are you good to see you good to see you we have a new donation from christ five dollar donation hey seth thought this might bring you some joy i played swans at my lgs went three and one in my four color pile said this seems highly in your favor apparently swans is a new meta slayer Ooh. I think that means we gotta hit some swans and draw some cards again. It's been a while since we've hit our swans and draw some cards. <laughs> it might be time. Yeah, fine finality is sweet. That's not on, this is like not on arena.deck. If you look at our deck list, many of these cards are just not on arena. This is fine. We got the, the real Obnix list. <laughs> Phone at Taplan. Thank you so much for the donation. Ooh, you should send me your deck list, Trice. I would, I would love to see it because I might be a connoisseur of the swans myself, as you know. So <laughs> I could see doing some swanning at some point. Oh, werewolf pack leader. Uh, well, you must die. Untap. I'm a looming marsh. You did fine finale spike in price recently is it expensive now well i guess you also probably should die come to think of it kill you untap the sage oh i wonder how many lands they have is there any chance we can <laughs> is there any chance we can get a strip mine did we see basics in game one i don't feel like we did i don't feel like we did are pioneer players greedy enough to play zero lands is that is that a thing that could be possible? Five color humans. Oh my god. Ooh. Oh my god, this build has no lands. Oh my goodness, pioneer players are that greedy. If this person just net decked a list. Oh, one planes. Hmm. Are they following their dreams or not? That's the question. No lands. One land. <laughs> one land oh, i don't even know so the most recent the most recent builds <laughs> the most recent builds haven't had one <laughs> there's an ajano these builds have an ajano too though <laughs> mana confluence does this one have mana confluence yeah this has mana confluence <laughs> i don't know should we just fire it off I mean, what else is it going to do? It's going to be a land, I guess, but. Oh. Aw. You're right, chat. Okay. Yeah. It's, there's too much tax. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. We're living in 2022. Every card has a million, a million lines of text. Aw. See, this, Besaidu, Besaidu sucks. <laughs> Wizards, wizards, what are you doing? <sighs> All right, tap link, go. Oh, that's no fun. It would be so much, so much more fun if it actually worked the way it did in my head. <laughs> Come on, wizards. Why, why don't magic cards work the way that I want them to? Uh, All right, so opponent's got the Coco by the looks. You know what card we really need in this format? We really need Mana Tithe. Mana Tithe is, is sadly missing from Pioneer. Well, that's a Rhino. Hit you to 15. Pass the turn. Yeah, Assassin's Trophy should probably be in this deck somewhere. Opponent. Uh, Grove would have come in to play Tap last turn, unfortunately, because both of our lands were Blooming Marshes. So, so would have came in to play Tap. So we need to get down the Overgrown tune. Ooh, okay. Spellbinder and... Well, there goes our Mob Nixilis. Ouch, this Paulo. This Paulo is good. Okay. Yeah, this is not ideal. So we need removal to get rid of the Brutal Cathar to get back our Siege Rhino. They got to take the yeah, Mob Nixilis. Now they get to untap. Well, this game, this is game two. Uh, this game, our opponent actually got to their Cocos, which I think is going to be good for them. That's probably their best card. A bonus smacks us. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I guess if they flip their Brutal Cathar, we can absent charm it. Which maybe maybe we gotta do. Oh, jeez. Ah, 
How is this person so good at drawing Cocos? Last game, they had two or three in hand by the end. This game, too. Why does this human deck always have a stack of Cocos in the top 10 cards of their, of their deck? Hmm. If it was paper, at what point does good draws become suspicious in paper? I don't play enough paper. Is there is there amount of, like... Is there amount of good draws that can happen in paper that that you're like, okay, maybe something funky is going on here? Uh, well, this is so incredibly bad, but we'll play the land. We'll pass the turn. Once they once they get to five, then you start to wonder. <laughs> I mean, still could be legit, right? <laughs> About it. Secluded courtyard. Untapped. Come on. Let's see Coco 3. Opponent goes to combat. Well, white, black, green. Abs and charm. Get rid of the brute. Take our beats. Get our rhino. Drain you. All right, opponent doesn't draw cards. They get in and hit us. Whew. In pre-release, I've faced kids with nine rares. I mean, that's probably possible with foils, though, right? It would be it would be a little weird, but if some of them were foils, then that could be that could be legit. Opponent even more. You know what we need is fine finality. Oh, it's flipped. Okay, that helps. We need we need the fine finality. Opponent passes. Planes. Ah, so we can't have Nyx list. One, two, three. Cycle of Triumph. Okay, Mythos. I mean, that's a removal spell at least. Play the land. Pass the turn. <laughs> So we can Mythos something, and then have Nixilis something. Fortnite, welcome to the Fishbowl for the 27th month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Good draws might be sus if you start with the same person luck sack for multiple events. That makes sense. So it's more about the person than the game. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, magic is weird. <laughs> like, variance makes weird things happen. So someone drawing the same things a bunch of times in a row. Ouch doesn't really mean anything. Well, that's a good one for our opponent. Well, all right. I mean, we can kill one of these, but really, this is this is real, real bad. We can't even recast our Siege Rhino. Okay, so basically, we got to draw... I think we got to draw the Fine Finality. I think that's that's basically it. We're taking nine to six. Yeah, it's Pony gets to draw a card too. We can't replay the Rhino. All right, fine finality. Fine finality. That's what we need. Opponent has something else. Could Tilda. And Vanishing Verse. Not good enough. Hmm. Yeah, Paula wrecked us. Wrecked us. All right. Well, we're on the play for game number three. Hopefully, hopefully our opponent doesn't draw so many cocos. <laughs> TLDR. Please stop drawing so many cocos. <laughs> uh, playing as people that don't use sleeves is also kind of sus. Why would no sleeves be sus? Yeah, London Mulligan. We stopped talking about London Mulligans, thankfully. Or I did, thankfully, but it still does do that. Just because I don't talk about it all the time anymore doesn't mean that it doesn't overpower combo decks. And I think uh, here's you wanna you want a very tinfoil hat theory? What if Wizards made Modern Horizons 2 super busted to take everyone's mind off the London Mulligan and what that was doing to Modern and Companions? Maybe maybe Wizards was like, you know what? We'll print Ragavan. They've all been complaining about companions, London Mulligans. They just won't stop. What if we print? What if we print Ragavan? 
<laughs> the stupid monkey. And then everyone will forget about London Mulligans. And everyone will forget about companions. <laughs> London Mulligate. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I don't think that's true, but it would be funny. People who play without sleeves probably don't wash their hands when they finish using the vest room. Can you really generalize that, though, from not playing sleeves? What if they've just been playing Magic a long time and they've always, they've always played without sleeves? Was London Mulligan that impactful? I thought it was pure positive. Uh, I mean, I view it as a negative for non-standard formats. I think it leads to a lot of the a lot of sameness. You see the same cards. Doesn't help that it also happened when we had companions, which is like the samiest mechanic. So it just makes games play out very, very, very similarly every time. Um, I guess you some people would argue that's a, a positive, perhaps. Ugh. Uh, two removal spells, which is good. And then nothing. I really don't want a mulligan on the play, though. Like, this is one of those questions, like, uh, in a world of London mulligans, should be shipping this hand? I mean, I guess we got a triome. We got a triome that we can cycle. Hmm. I guess we'll keep it. It does showcase skill more than chance, does it? How how would it be more skillful? Well, Blooming Marsh, go. So, I mean, I think, like... <sighs> Experiment one. I don't even know if we kill that. Okay, there's a Rhino. That's action, at least. Uh... Godless Shrine tapped past the turn. Okay, okay, okay. Rhino's good, Rhino's good. About it. Oh, yeah, the old mulligan. There were mulligan rules that were way too restrictive as well. Pro black, exile black card from a graveyard. That's obnoxious. Uh, Well, kill the experiment one. Yeah, that is. <laughs> That's super annoying. Well, okay. Thought sees you. Coco, Xanthrid, Necromat. Double about. Oh my jeez. Um. Uh. Hmm. <laughs> ha. Huh. Okay. Uh. Well, we're gonna take the. Oh, I don't even know. How do we beat any of these guards? <laughs> <laughs> Our opponent is on two mana confluences that helps, but Apostle Purifying Light, that's actually super good against us. <sighs> I'm tired of losing the Coco against this deck, though. The Coco's been the thing that's, like, keeping our opponent in this game. <sighs> we have one removal spell. Double Apostle that dodges all of our removal and pretty much all of our blockers. I mean, I think it's either Thalia's Lieutenant or Collected Company, I think. I'm not sure which one. Got to take the second apostle. Do we? I mean, the second apostle is annoying. Oh, but if our opponent just lands into Coco, that's so bad for us. The Thalia's Lieutenant also turns this into a 3-2. So it offers more immediate damage. Although I guess two of them is annoying. All right, well, well, we'll, we'll go with that plan. Um, play the planes, pass the turn. We get to siege Rhino next turn. We'll see if it's enough. I feel like after after fine finality being the card we couldn't draw for games, 
this is this is a matchup where we'd really like to draw it. All right. Thalia's lieutenant, opponent, gets and hits us. Out of 15. For now, Dryad. Well, land, crack it. Grab a swamp. Our opponent's taking a lot of damage off their mana, which is helping. Siege Rhino. Drain you to 12. Pass the turn. Opponent, do they get a land? Oh, they do. Temple Garden untapped down to 10. Here comes a Brutal Cathar. Yeah, kills the Rhino for now. Sure. Another removal spell would be kind of sweet. So we take five. Down to 13. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now what? Any chance of bringing Richard on for Jun versus literally anything else for against odds? Some of my favorite got that. That could definitely be. That could definitely be fun. I would. Uh, I'd be down with that. Wait. Tie three print. Oh, wow, they actually did reprint it. Smothering Tithe, Riley Knight Preview. I mean, that's a good one to come in right at that. Is that the last rare? We're like very, very close to the end of spoiler season. Puking up the coins. I've been telling Richard to do a gen amount with Richard for a while, and it hasn't happened yet, but maybe it will someday. Kid Koozie for the 30th month. 30 months with a lot of months, my man. Thanks for having me. What is your opinion on Swissier being pauper legal now? Probably going to be pretty good. Every master set, though, seems to shake up pauper, so it's not surprising to me to see it, but I expect it'll be pretty good. Welcome to the Fish Bowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ya. Hmm. Well, okay, so we're going to play Dryad. Thought Seize. Grow the Dryad. Go to 11. Oh, no. These Polos keep ruining our life. Oh, that makes things complicated. Oh, but Coco gets multiple Paulos. That could be that could be multiple Paulos. The problem with Paulo is what we were trying to set up is killing, doing this, and then killing the Brutal Cathar next turn to get the Rhino back. But if our opponent Paulos the Blood Chief's Thirst, then we might not be able to. We could, what we could do is just kill the Thalia's Lieutenant now, grow this to a 3-3, three, three, and then Paulo doesn't really do anything and take the Coco. Yeah, I mean, this is the, the end of the game. Like, I don't think we're going to run out of time. This is this is game three. Paulo is three in the air. Hmm. Take Coco. Kill Thalia's lieutenant. I think this is the best plat. I think we hold on to the Triome this turn. We might need to cycle it. This is a little risky. If this Brutal Cathar, Cathar starts flipping, it's bad. All right, opponent did top deck the land. So Coco would have came down. And we would have lost. Elite Spellbinder sees the land. 
All right. All right, Dak. Come on. Come on. Come on. Give us something. Pony gets in. We got to take it this turn. Or not. Hopefully they don't get in. I mean, I guess our opponent's worried about dying, too. All right, Pony gets in. Hits us. This is a huge turn. Huge, huge, huge turn. Huge draw. Abrupt Decay is... That is very nice. Very, very, very nice. That is probably the best draw we could hit. Or close to it. All right. So... Get rid of the Brutal Cathar. Get back the Rhino. Grow the Dryad. This forces Paulo to chump. Our opponent's dead. And that attack with the Apostle <laughs> Purifying Light so bad for them. Get in. Curia Dryad coming through. <sighs> I'm glad we took the Coco. I'm glad we took the Coco. And I'm glad we got a little lucky and top deck to the Brub Decay. Well, now I like where we're at. We're going to pass the turn. Opponent to taps. They got a Necromancer, but that doesn't look as scary at the moment. And it's going to oh, cost them some life if they cast it down to three. I want one more Rhino. I want one more Rhino to close it out. That's what we want. The Rhino kill. About it. Thinking. Necromancer, I'm sure. Down to three. That is Rhino range. Opponent. Passes. We draw. Oh, find finality. Find finality. I'll go to combat. Attack ya. See what our opponent does. <laughs> it is ironic, isn't it? Don't you think? <laughs> it's like rain. <gasps> who's the uh, who's the best player in the? Oh, Paulo. <laughs> yeah, we beat him. We beat him good. Take that, PV. <laughs> we played some really interesting games with this deck. I will say, there's been a lot of really close, interesting games. It's a good advice that you just didn't take. <laughs> Who would have thought? It figures. <laughs> oh, if we attack with both. Oh, am I an idiot? Do we trample over for damage anyway? Hmm. Yeah, maybe this was a bad attack. Opponent blocks with Necromancer. Do we play the Triome or cycle the Triome? Ah, oh, Fine Finality is appealing. We're going to play it. We're going to play it. Fine Finality would be really good. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Down to three. Yeah, we should have. We should have probably attacked with a Rhino, I guess. Okay, Thalia, that's actually kind of helpful for our opponent. And passes. Now go to combat. Attack with both. If they kill him, that's fine because we just get him back. That's actually kind of better almost. Opponent blocks, blocks, blocks. Hmm. Oh, they fizzle it, don't they? Huh. Okay. Tap lad. Go. Next turn, maybe? About it on taps. We can't get back the rhino because this can exile the card from the graveyard. So our opponent could have could have fizzled it. Thalia. Okay. I think the fine finality win comes through. Yeah, this this has an ability and they did have enough mana to do it. That is one of the weird little upsides. Opponent. 
I think this ends up being exact seas, though. Opponent passes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fine finality. We were a little worried about it earlier. Cast it. Grow it. And this makes it a seven, seven. Minus four. That's three. Might not be a seizure I know, but good enough. And we found a way. Found our way through. Yeah, the only problem is the Apostle. The Apostle can exile a card from our graveyard. That's the that's the issue. So if we try to get Rhino back, they just snipe it and go to one. So we need to do it this way, where we Wrath, Dryad, and attack. Oh, wow. Yeah, Apostle, and it's also a human. Uh, it's pretty, pretty good. So what do we learn about Rhinos and Omnixiluses and Hounds? Well, we got a treasure chest. We got a treasure chest and then we'll talk about the deck. Oh, all right. Come on. Come on. Something good, something good, something good. Only one chest, but sometimes that's all it takes. It could be a expensive ancient gold dragon of some kind. Ooh. Oh, boy. If this was paper. If this was paper, we'd be... We'd be doing a doing a dance <laughs> on Moto. Moto prices are so much different. I bet this card's not worth much. Bootleggers, bootlegger stash. What is the cost? Uh, promotional forty two, forty two cents. <laughs> Strict Proctor might actually be worth more. Strict Proctor, now oh, two cents. All right. Well. <laughs> We got some play points at least. So what do we what do we learn about this deck? What do we learn about this deck? We ended up going three and two, which is probably the perfect record for an Abzan mid-range deck. It's a weird one. I will say Siege Rhino was great. Siege Rhino felt really, really good. Of course, if you run into combo, it's not gonna be great. That's just uh, that's normal. You can't do much about that. We could play better sideboard cards for combo, which probably is necessary. So Siege Rhino was great. Query on Dryad. That was probably the surprise. Querying on Dryad actually felt really good, and I wasn't expecting it to be. I expected Siege Rider to be fine, but Dryad was actually a really surprisingly strong threat. The only disappointing card was Kunaros. Even in the matchups where Kunaros would have been good, it just died. So I think I'm off the Kunaros train. Uh, there's got to be a better three drop that we can play in this slot over Kunaros, even though it's a cool idea and it worked well with the deck name. And then OG Omnixilus was actually really good too. Like, Yes, again, it's got to be in those slower matchups, but that game against, uh, was it Sack? Was it the Sack game where Obnixilus just, like, kept us in the game and we played through our entire deck and it was ridiculous? Like, Obnixilus showed his power there, too. Yeah, Graveyard Trespasser is probably the, the way to go, the free two-for-one, uh, especially since we're not in red, so we can't play Fable the Mirror Breaker, so that's probably the way to go. Otherwise... I like the list. The removal was good. Abzan Charm was surprisingly good. Fine Finality. We don't have that many creatures. So the first mode wasn't very good. But the Wrath mode was essential at some point. So I gotta say, I like the deck. And if you want to do some Siege Rhinoing, it actually it gets the job done. Ask and you shall receive. $2 donation from Dreis. Oh, with the, with the Hit Our Swans Draw Some Card Dot deck. Ooh. Abundant Harvest is a big new addition. And Throws of Chaos, of course. That actually seems really nice. Oh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna have to hit our swans and draw some cards at some point. Thank you for the donation, there, uh, Dries. Oh, still up for game shortly if you'd like. I think since our games went so long, erroneous, I'm probably gonna not do Momir tonight. But uh, I will move it to the to the top of the list for for the future. We'll try to get in a Momir game. But I think since our games went so long, I probably got to take, uh, take Barbie out. He, uh, like I said, two and a half, three hours. That's when he starts to get a little restless. So probably going to make sure he doesn't go take down the kid on the bike or anything like that. Uh, but good news is we'll be back on Tuesday with some more streaming. I cut Kunros for another push. Yeah, more removal would, uh, would also be fine, but I like the list. If you want to mess around with Siege Rhinos, I think it's good. Uh, Yasharn, I think, would be very good, too. Yasharn, main deck or sideboard, great against the sack decks, a fine threat on its own. So I think that that could be another good addition. So what I will say overall about this deck, I think it's decent as it is. It's a little 2017-y, but with a few improvements, I think it ended up being pretty solid. Maybe we can have a real Siege Rhino deck in Pioneer. Just play more sideboard cards for combo. Drop the Kunros for Graveyard Trespasser, for Yusharn or something like that. Do a little bit more tuning, and the deck actually seems like it's got a shot. So on that note, everyone, that brings us to
to the end of our stream for tonight dinos i'll move dinos up the list there's still a lot of pioneer decks i want to play but dinos is on there as well uh but there's yeah like three or four pioneer decks that look interesting so we'll be doing some more pioneering soon uh replay youtube this week find the old streams normal youtube check out yesterday's against sods check out the spoiler videos tomorrow we are playing pioneer i believe for much brew so check that out on the youtube as well and one more reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish if you get a free goldfish ticker just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up most importantly thank you to all of you y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular and i love you all so have an amazing night have a great weekend i'll see you on tuesday to have some more fun so until then thanks for being awesome everyone i appreciate it and i will talk to you soon